Yeah, seems like you are yeah. putting your name up for higher offers. Oh man. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Good luck. No, no thanks uh, colleagues we are uh, meeting today uh, the time now is two minutes to 10 o'clock uh, Bran are you in the meeting that is correct sir okay did you send me the document uh, chair I'm, I'm, I'm also uh, I've been uh, busy hosting so oh, I'll right. change now as well no, no, starting no, to, no, to no, give no. my English. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Okay, when, when you are ready, it's not a, a problem. All right. Okay, thanks. <clears throat> uh, can you flight the agenda for today? Is it visible, Chad? Yes, I understand that the, 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 the SECDEF and the DOD delegation are um, experiencing yeah, the change. They are coming now, sir. They, they, oh, they are present, sir. Oh, they are present now. Oh, okay. Okay. No, no, it's fine. Uh, let me just look at the agenda and check if we cannot try and reprioritize it. And um, uh, I want to suggest that we bring up uh, uh, item number four and item number five. Uh, I think. Uh, um i don't think we'll have uh, uh <clears throat> we'll spend much time on those two we can quickly dispose them off and then uh, save save time for uh, item number three mm -hmm. and uh, and item number seven uh no no item number three and item number six because they require a bit of time. Um, <clears throat> I, I, I presented this uh, um, agenda uh, with that amendment, colleagues. We just prioritize two items. In other words, we bring up, um, <clears throat> in other words, we make item, yes, we make item number. The person you are freezing. Brian, are you there? Yes, I am, Mr. Mare. I, I suspect uh, Chairperson is experiencing load shedding. Uh, I, will just, I, I will just advise him to, to change okay. gadgets. Okay, sure. Thank you very much. All right. Recording in progress. Morning, members. Uh, could we just give Chairperson a few minutes? He is experiencing load shedding, so he's changing gadgets now. He'll be joining us in a, a few minutes.
Colleagues, can you hear me now? Yeah, Chairperson, you are, you are audible now. Okay. So my, my system is not going to be uh, a perfect uh, uh, one because there's load shedding. It's just uh, kicked in uh, at 10 o'clock. Um, but I will keep it on for as long as um, uh, we, we I can. As soon as I realize that it starts to affect the stability of my network, I will switch it off. Right. Uh, I was on the agenda. Uh, asking that we 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 we, we bring uh, item uh, number four to come immediately after item number two. In other words, item number four and five to come immediately after number item number two. So item number four becomes item number three, and uh, item number five becomes uh, item number four. Um, there is a correspondence I want to share with your colleagues that we received from the Institute of uh, for Institute for Justice and Reconciliation is item number seven. Brian will present that item. So I present this uh, agenda uh, uh, as amended, colleagues. I support. Uh, the agenda is supported. Any objection? No objection. Uh, th 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 Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Pastor. Colleagues, I'm not going to waste too much time. Uh, I wish to welcome uh, everyone. Uh, I know that the SecDef is in the meeting and um, it's uh, together with the delegation. Oh, yes, the DM is in the meet. Oh, okay. Let me start from the beginning. Uh, good morning, Ms. Minister. Good morning, Chair. Um, I'm having almost the same problem as you. Yes. So was... <laughs> okay, you. Minister, that's fine. Good uh, thank you so much. Thank you. Good morning, Minister. Thank you so much. Uh, the DM is also in the meeting. Good morning, DM. Honorable Chairperson, good morning, and to honorable members, uh, morning. Good morning, and, and welcome, DM. Thank you so much. And um, Sekdef and the team, uh, you are also welcome uh, to the meeting. Without uh, wasting much time on it, and uh, let's take apologies. Brian, are there any apologies? Uh, Chair, we, we have only have one apology. We have an apology from uh, Mr. Mafanya, uh, who's also experiencing uh, load shedding. Uh, thank you, Chair. OK. So we'll note that apology. OK. Uh, I hope Minister is fine if we reorder the item. Yes, uh, I don't know who that is. Uh, is that... Uh, good morning, Chairperson, uh, Honorable Chairperson, and oral members. Uh, yes, this is Solomon Chiane from the Office of the Auditor General. Just want to tender apologies for Mr. Lawrence Van Furen and Mali Totet. They are committed in other activities. Okay, no, it's fine. No, thank you very much. I, I, so you, you, the Office of the Auditor General is represented by yourself is welcome. Uh, Solomon Gianni, thank you so much and we, we welcome you. Okay, thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> we note their uh, uh, apologies. All right, colleagues, can we quickly uh, uh, deal with item number four? Uh, uh, Sekdef, uh, but before that, the minister uh, would uh, just do the opening remarks. She may want to uh, touch on all the issues, and um, but I leave that uh, to her. Uh, Honourable Minister. Um, good morning, uh, Chair. Uh, good morning. Again, Chair. I think um, SACDEF is better placed to take us through these issues. Um, precisely because I, um, I have listened to the briefing on the cyber. I am not sure that uh, I, I, I agree with the direction because, and probably I'm not agreeing with the direction because I have not been properly briefed on it. So it is better that the department takes us through it. Um, the others are the, the matters which really the sector is better uh, placed chairperson to take us through on. 
I will stay for as long as the system allows me to be on the meeting, but I may be in and out. Thank you very much. Okay, Th thank you so much, uh, uh, Minister. Okay, it's fine. Let's 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 take the first item. Uh, the SecDef will uh, uh, kickstart and then uh, appoint whoever will take us uh, through it. Uh, SecDef, we start with item number four that we've turned it to item number three. Over to you, ma'am. Thank you very much, uh, Chair. We have a, um, a item number four, which is on Umzimvubu. And uh, we have General Ramantone and the team. We are all seated in one room at HQ. I also want to front load Chairperson that currently we are also on load shedding. So we are on backup, which is a little bit weak. And I'm just hoping that we'll be able to pull through throughout the meeting or until such time that uh, the electricity is back. But all the team is dealing with the entire agenda of today is here with us in one room. So I would hand over to uh, General Ramantana and the team to talk on the Umzimvugu Regiment uh, issue on the alleged uh, 815 members uh, uh, that had to do with the, their payments. So I hand over to, to him, uh, Chairperson. Thank you. Okay, thank you so much. Um, General Ramatwana, over to you, sir. Uh, good morning, Chairperson. Let me firstly also greet uh, the Minister of Defense. Chair, I'm not sure if I'm audible enough. Yes, uh, you are audible, sir. You may go ahead. Thank you very much, Chairperson. Good morning to you. Good morning to all honorable members. And let me first greet the Minister of Defense and Military Veterans. Uh, the Deputy Minister of Defense, and let me greet as well some of the colleagues from the Department of Defense. Chair, the subject itself as indicated in the agenda is regard, with regards to Umzi Google. Um, I want to allow my colleague here to be uploading, he is uh, struggling a bit, to upload the, the, the presentation itself, and once it is showing on the screen, I'm going to be starting. Um, uh, just a brief background to the Umzumvugu uh, uh, case. Uh, <clears throat> I, it was, I think, December uh, this year, uh, no, last year, <clears throat> I received an email from uh, <clears throat> uh, uh, Honorable uh, Cedric Frolic, is the chairperson, is the, is the house uh, chairperson. Uh, who <clears throat> had received a correspondence um, uh, from, uh, uh, I think it was Malcolm, from Malcolm, Malcolm Danes um, in relation to uh, Umzum Vubu regiments, uh, regiment. So it affects 815 members who uh, said that they were enlisted uh, during, uh, in July last year, um, but they remain unpaid uh, since uh, that time. So I then requested my support team to get back to uh, Malcolm Danes and the team um, to ask for more information because I did not want us to deal with uh, issues uh, in general. I asked them to list uh, the names uh, and first names, first number, date when these people were engaged or these um, if military veterans were engaged and dates when they were discharged. They since uh, uh, gave us that information, yeah. and uh, <clears throat> which information I then submitted uh, to the office of the um, to DOD uh, via the PLO uh, with an instruction that um, uh, the information must be brought to the attention of the Chief uh, HR uh, Admiral uh, Kubu, and. Um, <clears throat> The CEO, the PLO's name is, um, what is his name, uh, Brian? 
It's uh, Mr. Sanele Monagali, Chair. Yeah, Sanele Monagali. Uh, that was on the 2nd um, of June. Um, I've looked at the trail, the paper trail, when we sent this uh, uh, message. And indeed, he wrote back to Brian. Uh, in fact, when he conveyed the message to, sorry, is the SECDEF? Sorry, is the SECDEF? Hello, SECDEF? Oh, I see. So yes, we are still struggling. Oh yes, you are connecting back. Yes, okay, it's fine. I will wait. I will. I will. I will, I will wait for you. Thank you so much. Good, great. So this is the Secretary of Defense colleagues. Uh, the system kicked them out, and um, <clears throat> so she didn't want to miss um, my opening remarks. Uh, she asked that um, we be patient with them. Are you back now, uh, Secretary? Sector for you back. All right. <clears throat> okay. So, so the background is is that um, uh, Brian, our support team, uh, sec uh, the committee secretary, uh, sent the message uh, to Sanele Bonagale. Bonage, Bonagali is the PLO in the Department of Defense with an instruction that the information be conveyed uh, to Admiral uh, Gubu. Um, Brian indeed um, sent the message uh, to Admiral Gubu on the 3rd of, uh, of June and copied um, uh, Brian so that Brian is, is, sees, sees that the information has actually been uh, conveyed. It, it, it's a list of all the, the, the members who were recruited uh, on, on, uh, during that period, eight, 815 of them, names, force numbers, uh, when they arrived uh, and they were, and were sent home. And uh, so that information is there. So <clears throat> our expectation, uh, Brigadier Matswani, was uh, for your team to look at each name as uh, presented, indicate whether indeed uh, this person ever reported and, um, and the details uh, thereof, what was the issue, why he or she remains unpaid, and of course, you, you have a guiding principle um, that <clears throat> spells out who qualifies to be enlisted, enlisted. So you simply just tell us whether this person was in fact enlisted, if he came and he had some issues to indicate what issues that person has uh, and, um, and, and so on and so forth. So that's, that's the information, uh, General. General, have you received the information? Uh, let me just check um, so that um, I know where we are going. Oh, uh, General Ramadan is part of the team that were got kicked out. Hello, uh, Sekdev, are you back? I've, I've, I've not received uh, uh, her, her request for admission. I'm not sure whether they are uh, experiencing further challenges. Chair, if I may. Yes, Minister. Um, it's probably because they would be in the same venue trying yes, to, it's possible. That, that is why it would affect them. We will call and try and find out exactly what is happening. What the issue is, okay, that's fine, Minister. Yes. We, will, we will wait because uh, they are central to all these four presentations. Thank you, sir. Thanks, Minister. Brian, maybe we can quickly take take off, take the, the seventh item, uh, the briefing on the, 
on that correspondence. Are you ready to do that? All right, Chair. Just keep an eye so that um, you do, or at least uh, Velim is also is another host. <clears throat> okay, just speak to it, Brian, uh, whilst we wait for the team to come back. All right, Chair. Uh, Chair, this is the correspondence uh, which we have received. Uh, actually, the correspondence was received from the speaker's office. Uh, the correspondence is coming from the Institute for Justice and Reconciliation. They are inviting um, uh, chair, uh, chair, I've tried to determine from them whether it is only the chair or along with five members, I mean, along with four members of the committee that I, they wish uh, to come uh, to, 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 to the gathering that they are inviting the committee to. I've not yet uh, received a response from them, uh, but then the invitation is to, the or to orientate members of parliament on the South African National Action Plan on Women, Peace and Security. Uh, it, the event is going to be on the 19th of August, uh, uh, sorry, of September. Uh, that is in, uh, in Cape Town. Uh, the hotel where it's going to be has not been uh, indicated yet. Uh, but then this is also accompanied by a letter from the speaker. Uh, which endorses uh, the, the attendance of members to this uh, particular uh, 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 event. And that is all shared, thank you. Okay. Um, <clears throat> colleagues, the date is the 19th eh, of September. That is correct, Chair. Okay. So when you receive the, 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 the correspondence from the office of the speaker, uh, I received, uh, Chair, this correspondence uh, late on Monday. Late on Monday. Okay. Yes, that's correct. Colleagues, this is the correspondence. Um, we will distribute it to all of you. And um, uh, Chairperson, chairperson, we are breaking a waste. Chairperson, you're breaking a waste. Uh, colleagues, do you want to say a uh, comment on this? Yes, the video now. Can you hear me? Is, is it clear? Yeah, yeah, much better now. You can just repeat what you have said. Yes, I, I wanted just to check if um, there are any <laughs> there are any comments on, on on this correspondence. Chairperson. Yes, you are back. Uh, a second. We are back just on a laptop. We are trying on the bigger screen, but we can proceed, uh, I think, with the Umzu Vubu Regiment uh, presentation. And by the time we're done, we should be able to connect to the bigger screen. Uh, we, we, will, we will do. Just give us one minute to conclude this. Item. Okay. I will then come All back right. to it. Uh, second. Thank you very much. Thank you. So much. Thank you. All right. Uh, uh, yes. Uh, any comment, uh, colleagues, you want to raise on this uh, in, uh, in, uh, correspondence? Uh, Chairperson, from my side, obviously, any any um, initiative um, like this uh, is a good initiative. So um, um, I, I'm not just quite sure in terms of how they will, what they will discuss and to what extent it will have um, influence on the defense force itself or whether it is um, in general. So uh, obviously I think the moment that we have got more details in terms of exactly what will be discussed and who will be the speakers, um, you know, it will, it will obviously help us. Um, yes, we can, um, I think, ask some of our ladies to, to represent us because that is, they are part of the, of the sector. Um, and uh, but it must not be only necessarily women uh, that must attend. Um, but to 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 the extent it will it will impact on our work with regards to the defence force. Uh, I, I you know from what I've quickly 
read through and, and it was a quick glance. I'm not quite sure how relevant it is, uh, but you know, any initiative like that, um, you know, surely must be supported. Thank you. No, no, it's fine. Uh, thank, any other colleagues? Um, uh, we can simply leave it at that. We'll then distribute the correspondence to all the members. All right. Okay. The the sector and the, and the team are back. Um, I, I was on the point where I was just introduced. I uh, was introducing the issue that um, uh, uh, Mr. The, the honourable member uh, Cedric Frolic uh, received. Um, uh, correspondence from Malcolm Danes, uh, who was um, complaining that uh, 815815 uh, members um, who were enlist enlisted uh, at the Umzumfubu uh, regiment. Uh, in July last year, uh, remained uh, unpaid. Um, <clears throat> so, and they were being pushed from pillar uh, to post. Um, I since asked my support team to go back to um, Captain Danes. Um, uh, to ask for more information, particularly the names uh, force numbers when the people arrived uh, at the regiment, Muslim Vudu regiment, and when they were um, uh, sent back home, she Julie uh, he Julie uh, complied and sent me a list of all the the members that um, uh, he was speaking that he was speaking on 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 behalf. And uh, I then asked the team to my support team to send the information, uh, the correspondence together with the list of all the members, 815 um, of them to the ministry via uh, the PLO. Bonagele um, is the PLO. Uh, with an instruction that um, it must be brought to the attention of the chief uh, HR Admiral uh, Kubu. Uh, <clears throat> from what I can see on the email, uh, the PLO uh, did that. Uh, he sent it to uh, the chief uh, HR and copied uh, Brian uh, Manji, our, our secretary. Uh, that was on the 3rd of, of June. Uh, we were hoping that when the team comes back, it presents the principles which are fine that underpin the recruitment um, and also speak to each one of those people. Um, listed in, in, in the list indicating uh, the state the fellow presented and um, and and, the, how, and why uh, he is not paid if the status um, <clears throat> was confirmed uh, that indeed um, he or she was uh, duly enlisted. So that's the information Brigadier Ramazwane will take us through. But before Brigadier takes, takes us through, have you looked at the list, uh, Brigadier? Sorry, General, have you looked at the list? Yeah, maybe you can sit in front of the uh, Chairperson, honorable members, once again, good morning and the greetings to the Minister of Defense and the Deputy Minister of Defense, and as well as the colleagues that are here around with us today. Chair, it's all about Unsimfubu. I need to indicate, Chair, 
that uh, we did not benefit much this side from the intro introduction that you were making due to the audio problem after we were able to link on. But uh, with your permission, Chair, I am ready to continue with the presentation. And, and, and in order to start the presentation, Chair, it's all a matter that arose. It's a subject matter that arose from July 2021 with the unrest in the country, especially in KZN, as well as in helping where the, the South African army was required or expected to deploy in order to stabilize the situation. And in doing so, the SA army were had an authorization through presidential minutes signed off by the commander in chief of the South African National Defense Force. And following that, the presidential authorization, the army issued out a media release, a media statement, in which the media statement was calling upon members of the reserve force to report for duty in their own units, in their respective units, and ready with their equipment for, for utilization or for employment. Now, this media statement is quite clear in the sense that it requires members of the reserve force to report in their respective units. That means it is to the exclusion of anybody else who would not have been a member of the, of the reserve force at that point in time. And moving forward, Chair, just to indicate here, and it's important why we are indicating this, it's in relation to the situation that came up then in Uzufuk. These are the provisions of the Defense Act. The Defense Act uh, 42 of 2002, Section 11, and it makes provision for the following members to be employed within the South African National Defense Force. Members of the regular force who serve full time until reaching their age of retirement, expiry of contract term of service, or otherwise discharged from the Defense Force in accordance with the law. The second one is members of the Reserve Force who serve on a part time basis for such periods as they have been contracted for unless their service is terminated in accordance with the law. It also makes provision, Chair, for members of the auxiliary uh, services uh, as they would serve for such period as the Minister of Defense may determine. And there are other provisions with regards to members of the auxiliary, of the auxiliary services. Chair, the, the next governance mechanism in terms of the reserve force, which talks to the enlistment of the reserve force, as follows, and these are the general regulations that are dated the 2nd of June 2017, they make certain prohib prohibitions on the part of the South African National Defense Force with regards to employing former members of the Defense Force within the reserves. And it therefore states that we may not enroll as the Defense Force, the Chief of the South African National Defense Force may not enroll a female member of the Defense Force. If that former member has resigned from or left, the defense for some condition that he or she would not accept or seek reappointment. And also, if the original grounds for termination of service in the defense force militate against enrollment, and quite important in relation to Umsum Fuku situation, Chair, is, is the, the second last bullet. The services of the former regular force member were terminated in terms of Section 59. It also has got some subsections there of the Defense Act. Right. But, but what this relates to, Chair, it is relating to this section specifically with discharges, specifically with imprisonment, specifically with, uh, with dismissal. And, and therefore, then it prohibits that these members need to be employed. And the lastly, Chairperson, is the fact that the former member that had left the Defense Force for on medical grounds or psychological reasons, which therefore means if you have to take back this member, enlist him as a member of the reserve force, that would mean that he has got to produce recent and con conclusive evidence of recovery, which would have then been verified by the Surgeon General. Now, these provisions, Chair, are very key when we talk about the situation in Umzumfu. Now, one needs to emphasize the fact that we bear in mind that the media statement and the call at the time, it was not limited to Uzum Fubu. It had was a call across the entire country. Now, therefore, then, Chair, subsequent to the release of that of, of the media release, there was then an army instruction. There was an infantry formation instruction. The infantry formation is one of the formations that we have in the army that employs mainly a category of soldiers that are called infantiers. Mainly, these are the soldiers that are deployed for utilization under these circumstances where it relates 
to all prosper and other missions as we do in, in the army. But then it was for the activation, just to emphasize the point of the general regulations, whether you there is an instruction to this effect or no instruction, you just know you are a unit of the reserve force. And whatever that you have to do, you've got to follow the general regulations as provided. And then members of the reserves were to report to their respective units ready for deployment. And this is what it was saying. But then it appeared at the time that there are people who reported in the unit. <coughs> and these people who reported in the unit, they were not enlisted as members of the reserves. And the intent was for enlistment. All right, in the Defense Force chair. Enlisting members of the reserve yeah, force is what we are breaking. Um, um, Chair, I think maybe I'm not sure, Chair, if you can hear me now. Yes, I can, I, I can hear you fully. No problem. You can hear him fine. fully. Okay, that's fine. Yeah, continue. No continue. Okay, continue. Thanks, Mr. Murray. And therefore, the Therefore then, Chair, as, as I was explaining, it appeared therefore then at the time we have to deal with two categories of people. We always would want to build capacity in the SNDF. And the other thing is the fact that enlistment of members who are interested to be members of the South African Army Reserve, it's a continuous process. That's something that we do every time. Death, but then there is a process that needs to be followed. And that is in accordance with those general regulations. That some members, although you are requesting you may not necessarily be enlisted in the, in the South African army. But further to the informed formation, call up instruct. Now, this is one of the things that came out. <coughs> it was a voice, a voice note. That the voice note was situated <coughs> on the Unzin Fubu regiment. Now, this is what happened with the, the voice note stated that all those who are soldiers should take the opportunity. So all those who are soldiers should take the opportunity to report that Unzin Fubu regiment, whether enlisted or not. Now. I am paraphrasing on this on this very one chair because there are a lot of things that we would have had, but to sum it up all, whether you are enlisted, uh, it doesn't matter. Colleagues, 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 Thank you, thank, thank you, Honorable uh, Mare. I think maybe the chairperson's, uh, maybe the microphone there has got a challenge. I am not sure if I must continue if the chairperson cannot cannot hear us. Yes. I don't know. I need permission. No, 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 no. Continue, 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 co continue, General. Continue. Uh, I, I'll, I'll follow, even though it has some uh, problems, but. It's, I think the problem is on this side. There's some uh, bit of um, uh, instability on the network, but this side, but continue because the colleagues seem to follow your presentation very well. Thank Go you very much, Chair. Me. Thank you, Chair. I am on the second last bullet, wherein the members that were there at the time um, and I'll speak about this at that time. If we're talking about 808 members who reported at the regiment for enlistment. Now, all these members, the, eight, the total 808 were not members of the reserves. In other words, they were not enlisted at the time. And only a few of these numbers that reported could be enlisted. Now, this category that of, of people who were, they were, they were either former, they were ex-members of the SANDF, some were civilians, just to qualify the word civilians, yeah, uh, after integration 1994, we had a situation where some members with demilitarized, especially those who are in the finance environment. So indications were that these civilians is that category of people that demilitarized. Now, when they demilitarized, they immediately became precepts. And when they became precepts, they were out of the Defense Act, no longer falling within the Defense Act. Uh, uh, as such, and therefore no longer within the military disciplinary code. And therefore there were those who did not integrate. And, and therefore then all of them never enlisted as members of the reserve. At the same time, as I indicated, Chairperson, there were reserve members of the regiment that also reported. Now, they, these were legitimate members of the regiment themselves. <laughs> they come in, these are reserve force members, no doubt about them, and they were taken in and, and they had to be, to, be, to be deployed. 
for the operation as it was it was intended. Yeah. And therefore, uh, Chair, just to indicate this point, because this is very, very important. Uh, the situation in Umzinvu, members were expected to report to the agencies. What we found here, the members came from different provinces, as far as Deben, as far as Cape Town, Western Cape, as far as Gauteng, they were all going down to Umzinvu Regiment. Now, the issue is this situation was unique when it comes to Umzinvu Regiment. And in all other reserve force units, which were also doing the same task, by the way, there was no, we didn't see this situation in the manner that it prevailed in Umzinvu Regiment. Now, the members who reported were accommodated at the regiment, and even though they were in they were not enlisted. Now, this is this is a point of inquiry for the South African Army. We are quite interested in this to inquire on this very one. The, the normal practice here, Chairperson, is the fact that you go there, you want to enlist, you therefore then as God to leave your documents, your applications, your form, including police clearances, including everything, and then you go back. You will then be called once your phone, your your, your file has been successfully enlisted. And therefore, we had this situation. So I am saying this is a point of inquiry in the South African Army, as it stands right now with the inquiry that was commissioned, that was convened. There were also allegations of new appointees, also a point of inquiry. We do not disregard the fact that the unit would have been overwhelmed with the number of people that were there. But that practice there is a concern for the South African Army. Now, the members, as they reported, as I said, they were kept there, but starting mid-July up until uh, mid-August thereabout, they were leaving not at the same time, all of them, uh, due to other challenges that were there, which I'll talk about administratively, but by the end of July, there was nobody. The last batch indications were that the 25th of August, all these members were out of, of Umzimvubu Regiment. In fact, they even requested some of them because of the areas they were coming from. Uh, to be supported in terms of uh, transport arrangement, et cetera, et cetera. Now, Chair, moving out of that slide, they identified administrative <coughs> challenges were as follows. In mid-August, it was brought to the attention of the Army headquarters through the HR section and Director Army Reserve that there were administrative challenges in Umzimvu Regiment. Now, these administrative challenges, there were quite a number of them. One of them is that there were people there who are not members of the Reserve Force, and they cannot be in this is that there were also challenges, for instance, of rations and other logistic items as it was required. And then a decision was taken. We've got to send immediately senior officers to go to Umzim Vubu Regiment to assess the nature of the problem and to, to resolve whatever problems that were there. Within that team, there was also HR team that made some, uh, uh, that did a feed on the ground uh, inspection. And at the time, there was 808 members that could be verified at Umzimbubu Regiment. Now, the team found that the members that were there, some have got criminal records, etc., and they've transgressed the military disciplinary code at the time they were serving, and those who did not integrate, and some civilians in the name of PSEPs, even though they might be having force numbers, but they have demilitarized, as I have indicated. And as a result of that, a decision was taken by the to say all members they should immediately leave the unit um, and, and to return back to their, to their unit. Surely, with this observation, therefore, there was no way that these members were going to be, to, to be, to be, to be enlisted. And further to this, it was the proper verification of files for enlistment, because then files at the time, given the number of the files, they were still to be verified in Umzimvubu Regiment. And upon completion of the, of, the, of the verification of the files for the enlistment, certain payments were activated for those who qualified for enlistment. And the first payment came out in December 2021 and resulted in allegations of non-payment. Now, the non-payment issue check, this is where all the allegations started and, and, and became very strong in terms of the fact that there are some people who have not been paid on this uh, for, from Umzimbubu. And, and members not meeting the enlistment criteria were the main reason for the nine payment. And following these developments and a number of other things that I, I, I mentioned in the previous slide, administrative challenges, etc., we found that it was necessary that we have to convene an inquiry that was dated the 28th of December 2021. 
and, and any intended payment was to be stopped pending the outcome of the investigation. Now, it was necessary to stop the, 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 the payment. We have to know and to be clear what is being paid from the Army headquarters site, what is being paid and what has been paid and why these were being paid. Because here we are dealing with the state and resources. And, and therefore then in whatever that we are doing, we must just double check and, and triple check to make sure this is in accordance with the law. And while some of the members of Umzim Fubu Regiment were deployed in KZN, those members' payments were being affected. There was no issue around them. And then, uh, Chairperson, if you, you would ask what is the progress in terms of the inquiry that we have put in place, and the progress with regard to the, the inquiry was completed and ended to the convening authority. It was referred back due to some shortcomings that have been identified. And such shortcomings uh, had to be addressed. Right now, as we speak, um, the, 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 the inquiry is undergoing a legal review. And we foresee that this will be completed year and about end of September. And then we will know. It's important that we deal with this thing here. Because what we want to do is to correct ourselves as the South African Army, as well as to take actions where wrongdoings would have been clearly visible. And we then, we then will have to take action around that. Chairperson, this is the status with regards to the payment. If, if we want to say who has been paid and what is, who has not been paid, this slide talked to that. We found 135 were eligible for payment. And these members were accordingly enlisted. However, 673 of these members, they were excluded, the reasons being the following. Previous convictions, as I indicated, of course, and, and some of the members who were former members of the South African National Defense Force, they left with a clean record. But when they were out there in civilian life, they have now accumulated some criminal uh, acts in their names. And therefore, as a result, clearly, you can no longer enlist them because that's what the general regulation says. We cannot do that. And then, uh, obviously, the former members who did not integrate at all, we're talking about the BBC states, the Ukraine forces, the SADF, uh, and, and these were in the main, those who reported there and, and had not integrated. But, Chair, we had a total amount of 68 people who could be enlisted, and they have been enlisted, this is, they are part of the 673, which is, we are indicated there. The, the issue here, these members, were, were their enlistment were completed at a time we have already made a decision that says that the payment must be stopped. And for the reasons that we want to make sure these are state resources, and, and, and we therefore have to be sure what is it that we are doing. Now, all this is still part of this inquiry that we are talking about here. In, in summary, the enlisted out of the 808 is 203, and the not enlisted 605. They have not been, been enlisted, the 200, 605 at all, and for reasons that we have just indicated. Just to give a, a, an overview, Chair, this is, this is a summary of uh, resources spent uh, in terms of the time period when the members were all there in Umzum Fugu Regiment. Now, second last bullet, I want to emphasize on that. The salary projection, arguably everybody else had to be uh, paid. You are running into 23.9 million. Uh, and so the total that, we would have, that would have costed us, we're talking about ration and all that has been listed from the first slide right up to the second last bullet would have incurred a total of 28.5 million rand. But uh, at least this has been reduced. We, we have stopped this and we want clarity. We want to be sure what is happening here in terms, of course, uh, if there is no supporting law that says pay this, we are using the Defense Act. We are using the general regulations and that is what we have to stick to. And therefore then in conclusion, Chairperson, and, uh, the, as I indicated, this is the progress with regards to the Board of Inquiry. This is what I indicated. The convening authority is going to get this. Clearly, as you, you are busy with the Board of Inquiry, there comes a time, it has got to be completed. It has got to be handed to the convening authority. The convening authority will go through it and to say that I am happy with the Board of Inquiry, I'm going to proceed. And therefore, if there are shortcomings in the Board of Inquiry, 
have got to be clarified those shortcomings. And this is what has happened with regards to this board of inquiry. End of September, it's going to be handed over to the convening authority. And like I'm saying, Chair, it's important. The members who could not be enlisted and they've got criminal records, there is no way that the South African army was going to enlist them. It is, it is just not uh, proper. It wouldn't be proper in accordance with the law. And I just want to indicate, Chair, we, we, through the infantry formation, you, if the, those members that were there not accepted, there is a provision. This kind of a document is what we give feedback to the member to say that you were there, you have given us your application, we have seen your application, and all what is happening there is more in line with the general regulations. And if you have not been accepted, that is what is going to appear in the letter that will be handed over to you. Chair, I submit uh, this and the presentation. I want to submit over and over back to the Secretary for Defense. Thank you so much. Chair, we, we are ready to uh, take questions. Thank you very much, General. Yes, yes, thank you. I was just saying, Chair, uh, we are ready for the questions. Okay. May, may, may I make this request um, uh, to you, Sekdev, but uh, I, I'll ask Brian to flight the, the list uh, of these members. Um, I, I, I want to send the, the list back to you uh, once again, uh, so that um, we, you, your team, applying the principles that have just been presented by uh, General Ramazwana, um, <clears throat> uh, provide, finish us with the remarks on each uh, candidate. Can you flat it, Brian? Brian? Um, I will then take uh, uh, comments from each members. This is the list that um, we received from uh, the complainants, uh, from Danes who's, who, who's representing these people, right? The reason the matter is on the agenda is because um, the department did not respond uh, we, like I said earlier on that we finished, we sent this list to you, uh, to the ministry via the PLO for the attention of Admiral Kobu on the 3rd of, uh, of June. All we need so that we close the file, all right, it's you indicate just giving us the remarks um, pertaining to the status of each case. Uh, so that we can then uh, send this matter back to uh, Honorable Frolic uh, in Parliament and say, uh, this is the response from the department, please forward it to um, uh, the complainants. Uh, this is the list. Um, okay, I think it goes right up to 815. So, so that we are sure, Brigadier, that we are talking about the same people. Uh, but the way you are presenting, it looks as though we're talking about the same people. But for confirmation, please uh, remark on, on each case. Please remark on each case so that we can then uh, close the file um, with, with, with the remarks. If they uh, have any uh, objection to the remarks you make, they will then take the, the objections um, they will, they, will, they will then take the matter up with you. Do you agree, um, uh, Secretary, on this before I ask the colleagues to comment this approach? The approach, because if you looked at the presentation, we were giving the round figures, we will obviously now go back because then the, uh, there would be that information uh, from our colleagues in the RES to those people who uh, constituted the 808 and then they will uh, uh, contrast the information against the names that you have given. So I think we will then populate that spreadsheet and come back to you to give you an update on each one of those. Because in the presentation, it stated who qualified and who was paid and who didn't qualify and for what reasons. So we'll break it down per individual so that then it becomes useful to the members of the committee. Thank you, Chair. Uh, th thank you so much, uh, uh, Sekdev. Uh, colleagues, are there any comments on the matter? Yes, sir. From my yes, side. sir, Mr. Moran. 
Yes, Mr. Quite, Murray. Quite, I've got quite a few. The first one, I just want to start off with this letter, uh, this list. Um, if I had heard you correctly, Chair, you said that when you received that letter from Captain Danes, you asked Brian to forward that to the department and to confirm. Now, for the SECDEF to only respond now to say that they will come back, I mean, you know, with the greatest of respect, that is, that is not acceptable. You have given them ample time to respond. It's now middle of September. You've already done that, seems to me, about June already, June, July. Um, so, so, you know, why did they not understood your request and instructions? That is just totally unacceptable. Uh, and it means that you know we are we have been we don't have all the information because the department didn't respond to what you requested. That's the first thing. The second thing is as obviously the board of inquiry. And it seems like there's quite a lot of information that the department hasn't taken into consideration, according to the insectif now. Now that posed the question whether the board of inquiry has taken that into consideration. And uh, in terms of this presentation, the Board of Inquiry will be completed by the end of this month. That's in two weeks' time. So, um, and I mean, that's already nearly a it's, it's more than a year since this, uh, this played out in, in, in Umzumbubu, and, and nearly a year after the Board of Inquiry has been, has been commissioned. So this is kind of very, very slow, and, and it's a very concerning to me. I just want to go back to, um, to the presentation. Um, and I just wanted to ask on the, on the presentation of the call up the, where they, it was explained, um, there was a SA Army instructions 53 stroke 2021. Um, that clearly gives the indication or the impression that it is not only reserve force members to be called up, but only also others to be enlisted to be called up. And then the, the voice note, um, you know, they, there was this voice note that they said, surely that voice note is there and hopefully they have listened to the voice note. And uh, I don't know if I'm correct, my information is correct. My information is that's the, that's the voice note coming from Colonel Keaton, who is the officer commanding of, of uh, Umzumbubu Regiment. Now, anybody who has listened to that voice note can clearly, can clearly um, get the instruction um, um, in that voice note. And even, and even in terms of the administration around, that person was specifically said, come get people to, to line up. Uh, you will do, be part of the administration. So, so there seems to be things in the presentation that, uh, that gives the impression that this is allegations or it is alleged and things like that where in fact, you know, there are some at least prima facie evidence in many of, of these cases. Then I just want to say, you know, there seems to be, there's 850 names. My information is the same as yours, Chairperson. It's 815, seven died subsequently. And now the department is only talking about the 808. But if, if, if all 815 is, is eligible to be paid, then it means that those who have died subsequently their families have got rights as well so we must go back to the 815 and they must verify that 815. then i just wanted to you know and, and the next slide specifically gives um there was an allegation of new appointees to manage the reserve force the voice note is very clear it's absolutely very very clear about whom who must assist with the with the administration and the management of that and and, and that should be acknowledged by, by the general, and it seems like it is not. Then um, I want to go to, um, to just the, 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 the slide where it talks about the payments. Now, the 115 that were eligible for paid, my information is only 56 of those members were actually paid. So in other words, certain members were paid for a month. Not, not for the full period or the call-up period, but for a month. So the Army, the SA Army Bank Confirmation Letter gives actually those 135 names, and that is available, uh, and we know that. So why was only 56 paid 
And then obviously, when will the next be paid as well? Um, you know, what, my question just is, were anybody paid from GOC support? And if so, why were any, was there anybody paid from GOC support? And then, and then what was the amount? And, and please explain that to us, if that is the case. Um, the, the ones that were actually paid, that 56, uh, was it part of this or were they paid by, by the DOD and how did that work? Then in terms of that, that preliminary findings, um, my information is that the, the, the bus transport were arranged for the people to go to Umzabubu. Now, if that is the case, who paid for the bus transport um, to Umzambubu for all these members, and who made those arrangements. Clearly, it cannot be just done by anybody because that is quite a sum of money. Um, and for anybody to, to arrive there from wherever by bus, um, you know, it, it just that doesn't fall out of the sky. So that, that's very, very strange to me. And obviously we need to know who made those arrangements um, and for those people. Then I specifically want to know um, that just in, in the bottom of that page, it says enlistee salary projection. Now, is that the hypothetical one or is that what will be paid out? Because if it's projected, it seems like it is planned to be paid out. Now, is that the rest of the members? Um, and, 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 what, and for how many people is that 24 million rand that we are talking about there? Then on the, on the board of inquiry, I hope that that will come to the committee and that we will not sit in a situation that at the end of the year, we still don't have a copy of the board of inquiry. The last page, uh, Chairperson, there is a letter that apparently was given according to this presentation to everybody who, um, who were there. So in other words, the 815 members. Um, the letter that we have seen here is only the first page of, I don't know how many pages in that letter. So that is, that is, um, is not fully disclosed to us. Um, and then who signed that letter? And um, my information is that letter certainly didn't go to all the 815 members. So that comes back to your initial request for the 815 to be vetted and to tell us why, you know, they were not recognized. So, so it seems like there is a number of things that is still outstanding. Um, for me, it is very important, the board, board of inquiry, um, the voice call, the voice note call up, is that Colonel Keaton or who is, is, is that in the voice note? Uh, because that, that, is, that is very clear. And in who, on whose instructions did he, did he act it? What was the roles of, of uh, General Chalisi, General Moni, and Colonel Keaton in this, in this matter? Uh, and will there be any consequence management um, um, with regards to, to anybody who has done that? I accept the, 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 the framework that was given to us. And I, don't, and I don't say that is not true. That is the legal case. But we know that what happened here was, was outside of this legal framework. Somebody or a group of people authorize this and drive this um, obviously illegally or at least irregularly um, uh, that will impact on our audit again and that's why the auditor general is present today so are they going to be and that's my 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 question again then to the minister and the sector consequence management will that also be just put in the in the bottom drawer file 13 again and only be talked about and nobody be held accountable Thank you very much, Chair. Much appreciated. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Pasopu. Thank you very much, Chair Bessin and uh, all our members, uh, the ministers and the deputy minister. Uh, I had the same consent as raised by the Honorable uh, Mr. Murray um, about the day or not to respond to the letter that was sent to the accepted, but I want to go for why they didn't respond to a letter that was sent to them. 
Then number two and the last point, for me, Chair, the information given to us uh, and the processes that are being followed, I, 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 I want to submit here that in my view, the department is on track. And, 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 and because if you look at this matter, it's very complicated. And, and for us to take a decision, we are supposed to take an informed decision, knowing very well ha what happened. And therefore, Chair, I am proposing that let's accept the process set by the department, but, and wait for the outcome, but all what we need to do here is just to set a time frame to say on such and such a date, we expect a feedback. So that would be submission chair for this because as I look at it, it's very complicated and it needs a thorough discussion. I mean, I mean investigation, which I believe in my view in terms of the presentation by the department is, is on track in doing so. So I'm proposing that chair concretely that we as the committee, let's allow that process, but there should be time frame set for it. Thank you very much. Okay. All right. <clears throat> okay. I, I don't see any other hand. Um, uh, Sekdef, uh, Minister, you may want to, to comment, but you'll indicate when you, 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 you want to come in. But let me just take uh, Sekdef for now um, or, or, or General Ramazan. Chairperson, I would uh, allow General Ramantoni to address the issues because they are really largely around uh, the issues of deployment. <clears throat> but also just to say, uh, Chairperson, we have tracked it through our channels. Uh, uh, the report was sent to the office of the CHR. And unfortunately, it was not really shared uh, uh, with our colleagues in the army. But uh, as we uh, always uh, do, we commit uh, that we will populate the spreadsheet and then give an update on, 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 the, on the information that is required. Uh, because we really want to cooperate with the portfolio committee and we will uh, do so and also update on the fall of inquiry as stated by the uh, presentation. But I will hand over to General Ramuswan. Okay. Thanks. Uh, thank you, Sir Def. <coughs> thank, thank you, Sir Def, and uh, thank you, Chairperson and Honorable Members. Chair, I, I need to start off um, by, by saying the following. Um, the matter with regards to Muslim is a matter which we have subjected it to the Board of Inquiry to an investigation as such. And as I was going down through the presentation, I tried to indicate what are those areas that we are worried about in terms of us, which has led us to say, let us establish uh, this particular investigation so that we can look at, at these areas. Now, if I may just once again, with your permission, Chairperson, just indicate um, what we said uh, during the presentation. The first thing we were worried about the people who were kept there in the unit. Like I indicated the fact that when you do an enlistment, it's very clear, you hand in your documentations. There is no need for you to be accommodated to the unit. And it's just same thing like I'm applying for a job, if I may use those words. We have, we have understood that part. And with regards to the new appointees, we have understood that part. It's, it's one of the areas that, that we say that we're subjecting this matter into an inquiry. Resource utilization. In terms of the amount of money that has been spent, we have to bring this out. We're talking here state resources. And the other issue is with regards to the voice load. The reason why I am trying to list all of these aspects here is to indicate that these are subjects of an investigation. And, and them being subject of an, an, an investigation chair, I need your protection that I need not dwell into the details of this. In my position in the South African Army, should I begin to talk about the voice note and to bring out something around the voice note, uh, I think I will be unfair to the, to the investigation that is going on, just as an example. 
And, and therefore then there, there was also administrative issues that came out. And the other biggest question that we have, Umzi Vubu is not just the only reserve force unit that the South African Army has. There are reserve force units throughout the country. And therefore the issue is why Umzi Vubu? These things, all of these things, Chair, they've got to come out from the investigation itself. We've got to know what is it that has transpired in, in Umzimfu and the Board of Inquiry need to cover us in this regard. I just want to re respond to the issue, the fact that the Board of Inquiry has taken quite a long time to be done. Um, well, of course, the, 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 the one issue says you are busy with the investigation will lead you to another. And I don't want to speak on behalf of the investigators, but the investigators did present the, the board when it was completed and it was found to be having shortcomings. And as a result of those shortcomings, it was referred back. And, and referred back right now, as, I'm, as I speak, it is in for legal review. And legal review, the time frames they are to be completed by the end of September, and, and thereafter it will then be given to the convening authority. And the convening authority has got to satisfy themselves with regards to this board so that they make informed decisions with regards to the board. And, and, and this is where we are now. So the board of inquiry was not started, it would not have started, it started here in the 28th of December, as we indicated. It was because of what we were observing and all the issues that we were realizing and culminating into non-payment in the Google regiment. So therefore, the, the inquiry was important in this regard. The issue with regards to the 815 names and, and some of the members we have passed on, Chair, this, this issue, is going to be looked at should be also an outcome of the board of inquiry. I don't want to say how far is the board now and begin to discuss the contents of the board. I think if I do that, it, it, it will not be correct of me to do that. So, but if, if we want to say, in the army we spoke about a figure of 808, and, and we need to say, we, 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 as things stand right now, we're going to have to go back to the Board of Inquiry. The Board of Inquiry, sure, and, 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 and uh, obviously I don't want to talk about the content. One of the things that we should be able to see is who was in, in Unzu Fukuruji. So I will leave it at that, Chairperson. Uh, and obviously I've already said about a voice note. Uh, if I begin to talk about a voice note and what it is saying and all that, uh, I will not be doing justice to the investigation that is currently going on. Payment, only 56 members uh, that have been paid. Chair, that is not the record that we have. And uh, so on, on this one, the, it's not 56 members who have been paid. That's not the record that we have. What we have is what we have presented. Is anybody paid from the GOC uh, support? Uh, the GOC support, uh, has he paid anybody? The, the members that were, were, were reporting at Umzimfu, it would depend on him. In the main, the biggest of, of the members, they were those who were infantiers. So they would have been under the GOC of, 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 of infant reformation. There will be those who have, who have reported there. Just, just to, to indicate to you, Chen, out of that same number, there are people who are who, who are uh, in other services like the Navy who came in. But those ones were not taken. So the biggest number would have come from the infantry. The number would have come from artillery and the number would have come from armor, just as an example. But what, what then we did was to, 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 to put a, a global picture of how many have been paid in the South African Army for this. Um, Chair, uh, then there was the issue about the English cheats, that money which is there. I did indicate in the presentation to say that why we are indicating that particular slide. And I indicated that if you look from serial number one, right before the second last bullet, those costs have been incurred. 
But the second last bullet would have been a projection to say, if you were to pay all 800, the, the number of 800 plus that you were to pay, that is what the state would have incurred. It's important that we, we project this particular slide. And then the total which the state would have lost has been the last bullet, which we then indicated there. Now, if you want to say the payment, how much is that? It's 2.2 million. But then you take the 2.2 million and you add with the rest before your second last bullet. And, and, and that, is, that is where we are, Chair. And there, there is, I, I just want to check if, if more or less I am covering uh, everything here. Um, Chairperson, I, I need to be advised if there is something else that I've left out. But deliberately, Chair, any subject matter which is, is a subject of inquiry. I, I really would request your protection that I do not go into that. And um, the reason for that being that uh, the, I must respect the investigation that is going on. And if I talk about something that is in the investigation, then that will be something else. Chair, I want to hand over back to the sector. Chairperson, um, I think that uh, concludes the response to the questions that have been raised. Okay. <clears throat> There's something I miss about the whole thing, uh, let, let's admit. And, um, and it explains why uh, it's subject of uh, the matter, the whole uh, matter is subject of the report of uh, inquiry. Um, so um, uh, there the, the are findings, but it's reported that the findings have their own um, uh, weaknesses and uh, the, the convening authority has since called for more information and the information has since been uh, uh, produced and submitted to the convening uh, authority and the, and the convening authority is um, uh, assessing, evaluating uh, uh, the evidence including the new evidence and upon uh, concluding will then make a final determination on the matter. Is that the conclusion um, of the process, uh, Brigadier uh, General? Uh, General? Um, Chair, <laughs> I, I, I need to just with your permission just to assist you, Chair. It's Major General Ramon Tuanach. <laughs> uh, it is for the third time, but you are forgiven, Chairperson. <laughs> uh, May I then say, Chair, you, you, you have summarized it, Chairperson, and, and thank you for that. I've got nothing to add. You have really summarized it, Chair. Thank you so much. No, no, no thank you so much, uh, General. Uh, my apologies. Uh, my apologies. And um, back then, you would, uh, you know, the highest authority would be um, who, who say Jane. So a sergeant. So now, if I confuse the ranks, please, uh, my apologies. Uh, General, it's fine. I, I think let's let's leave it at that for now, and and then allow uh, that process to 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 conclude. And that as soon as um, the, that process has concluded, I uh, would appreciate if you come and then uh, do a presentation uh, to us, because like I said uh, earlier on, that uh, something, there's something that um, is uh, not, um, um, adding up. that's not- There's I, something that's, that's not adding up. That's not adding up. I think that's the I was looking for 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 that word, uh, <clears throat> Mr. Mare, uh, and that. But we will not prejudge the matter. Uh, we will uh, patiently wait for the process that we have uh, undertaken to to conclude, uh, and then look at at it. And we would want that people who, uh, 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 in the in the system, in the establishment, or in the SNDF for the department who. Uh, you know, um, cause the department to incur uh, unnecessary expenditure, that they be consequence management. We want to emphasize that point, consequence management, so that 
um, uh, this thing, it's, 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 <clears throat> it's nip, it's nipped from the bud. Um, we, we can't get the, the, the department being, uh, you know, um, uh, caused to, um, you know, incur unnecessary expenditure uh, in view of the budget constraints that the department is working under, you know? And uh, so there's got to be discipline and the discipline must start um, with, especially people who are in the commanding um, echelons of the SNDF, because it, it, it looks as though, um, you know, uh, some people uh, have to answer. Uh, and let's allow that process to, to happen. So I can, I note uh, Tabo, uh, Honorable Tabo Mutle's hand, maybe he will be the last person to speak on the matter uh, before I ask the minister to, to conclude. Uh, Chairperson, there um, was just three of, three of mine, there's just three of mine that was not responded to. Uh, you, you think that those three can't wait for the report, the, no. the final report on, no. on, on, on the discussion? They speak to the well, process. No, I, I, well, first of all, if you allow me, um, I mean, let's wait for the Board of Inquiries. Uh, I've got no problem in principle with that. Um, but then we must know that the matters that were raised today will be addressed in the Board of Inquiries. Otherwise, you know, uh, General uh, Ramat could have, could have responded to that. That's the one thing. Then the, the, the question on the on the consequence management, I'm I'm glad you raised it, and uh, and and that was a question to the secretary and the minister, and then the last one was just that that letter, uh, where I was just asking whether that letter on the last page of the conclusion, whether that page, whether that letter was issued to all 815 or 808 that is that is not uh, that is that is still alive today, um, so uh, uh, I mean that is not something that. That, that 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 can be reputed in a in a board of inquiry or or compromise. So if if the general can just respond whether all 815 or 808 have received that letter. Thank you very much. Okay, I, I, it's fine. I, I will grant you the last uh, the the last question, Mr. Mare. The the because the rest will. Uh, um, uh, we would still be able to raise them, raise them when they come back uh, to us with their report uh, on the B or um, the, the board of uh, inquiry. And uh, maybe <clears throat> what we need to add is to know when will is, is that process likely to conclude, so that we don't wait in perpetuity. But the minister has, has listened to the whole presentation and the discussion. Maybe who she would want to uh, comment on that as well. And the table, um, you you are next on, on the matter. Maybe let me just take you before I go to the minister. Honorable. Right. Th thank you very much, Chair. I think on your last uh, uh, assertion, you have covered me. I equally wanted to solicit from them uh, as to how long or when are they anticipating concluding the their investigation so that. Uh, we are also in a position to schedule uh, accordingly so that we we can uh, then uh, call them to come back and brief us uh, with regard to those developments. But if we live here without uh, an indication as to when are they going to conclude their investigation, we will not know as well when to uh, 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 call them or put into our program a session uh, to engage with them on the matter. So I think that, that that's important. That, that must be done. Thank you, Chair. Uh, no, th thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, uh, Honorable Mutle. And uh, <clears throat> but let let but the information that we have requested. Um, uh, just a comment on each name. Obviously, can't wait uh, for the process to conclude. We just need to know the status of each case as it stands. Of, of course, the information is subject to the final 
a determination uh, on the matter because you may you may come back and say no look we have reviewed the status of this case and that case and that case and the final position now is x um on 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 on, on those cases so we'll take that information as um a work in progress until you make a final determination uh, on the med. Uh, I see a potential uh, fruitless and, and fruitless and wasteful expenditure here, but I'm not uh, making that point. Uh, I don't want to prejudge the matter. Let's allow the due process uh, to take to, to, to run its course. Minister, you have a concluding word on this. Thank you, Chair. May I keep my uh, camera off? Um, Chair, I want to commit to come back to you on by when before the weekend just to indicate to you by when defense thinks that board of inquiry will have concluded its business so that we can come back and account the second commitment that i do make is that i want to agree firstly with the community i when i first got this report i thought something was very off here um, there is no way, I understood that the country went into a, a kind of panic that people who may not have necessarily been soldiers may have wanted to come to stand up for the defense of the country and would have gone there. But those people would not be wrong in my own summation. It would be the people who accepted them without explaining and keeping them there. It would be the people who did not explain and help these people to go back. So, so that board of inquiry must establish the facts so that we can come back to you. I want to agree with the committee that that which we say was the correct people who are on the enlistment guy, 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 that information can readily be made available to the committee. If we are clear that all those that we kept and those that we kept we have paid I do not see why that information would be held back from the committee whilst the board of inquiry actually goes after what is offish. And then the last thing that I want to say is that yes, um, we're becoming a department that keeps on promising to act and do not act on people who do wrong things. And, and I've said it very publicly, chairperson and committee members, when you write and you give an instruction for action and the people that you are instructing are not acting on their subordinates. You have absolutely no, no other cause but actually take action against that, those that are under you. And that cause is a very difficult one sometimes to take, especially uh, when you are new in a department. But I want to commit to that we cannot continue to have a reputation that is bad as defense and that something really needs to change because it's not only on this matter there are a number of matters where we just seem to think that we are all um, you know buddies we know each other we can cover each other and 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 things will just go away it can't so i make that commitment chairperson by the end of this week I will come back to you on when this board of inquiry is supposed to have finished and the report uh, uh, be discussed by you. But in the meantime, I want to say those 800 odd names that we speak about, the defense said we can look at these ones and these ones we know they are reserve members. Let us make that list now available with comments along the side of saying this one was disqualified because this one qualified because this one we know should have reported there, but did not report. This one is a pure civilian, and therefore, in all honesty, we apologize to you and don't do it. And if we have to write these individuals' letters of apology as the department, we should do so. Thank you, Chairperson. Thank you very much, Minister. <clears throat> well said. We can't uh, 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 take it uh, any further. Uh, we want to leave it at that for now until such time you come back uh, to us. Firstly, before the end of this week, indicating when um, uh, the process is likely to conclude um, uh, uh, in, in, yeah, so um, 
yeah, like when with when the process is likely to conclude, so that um, we can then schedule our meeting around uh, that time uh, to receive the report, and then two, that in the meantime we'll get the comments on the list that we have submitted uh, to you. Obviously, it would be work in progress, like I said, because you, the, the, the final determination may come back to with a, 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 a final position uh, on each case, uh, as, as it were. So we want to leave it at that uh, for now so that we can then move to another item. Thank you very much, colleagues, for, for, for your engagement. I think we've taken I thought this matter was uh, going to be a 30 minutes uh, matter, but I can see now it's just taken us more than one and a half hours, one, one and a half hours, but load shedding came in uh, in between. All right, so we want to leave it at that. Thank you very much. Uh, can we quickly, thank you very much, uh, Major General uh, Ramazana. Uh, let's move to the next item, which I said was the, um, uh, what did I say, uh, Brian, was the next item? The cyber warfare strategy. The cyber warfare, warfare um, strategy. Uh, right, let me just call for, for, for the presentation uh, from, uh, from, from the team. So just a brief back, background uh, to it, uh, colleagues, um, before I call for, for the team, uh, my notes. Um, uh, with Minister, we have been following, tracking this matter. Uh, I think it was in 2018, 2019 financial year. Um, it was reported that uh, the strategy, the cyber warfare strategy uh, was within the departmental approval uh, process. Um, uh, <clears throat> so uh, this strategy, the development of the strategy started in as well in 2015-2016 financial year. This when it was reported as a, a target to be met for the first time, 2015-2016, 2016-2017, nothing, 2017, 2018, and 2019. Again, uh, the matter was still yet to be finalized. And um, it has since, uh, <clears throat> uh, uh, I think the department has, uh, did not report on it in the last uh, financial year, if I'm not mistaken. But we want to assume that the, the strategy has been finalized now. Um, uh, uh, but the, 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 the team will report um, I just want to give a brief background why we are calling uh, for, for, for this report, because the matter remains outstanding for a very long time. And uh, so the national um, uh, uh, the the dev national development plan uh, does uh, talk to issues of cyber security and, and cyber crimes. And um, but the NDP doesn't highlight highlight any particular role for the DOD with regards to cyber security. And um, but of course, uh, it has a role uh, in cyber 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 crime cyber crimes. And uh, the National Cyber Security Policy Framework. Uh, I'm looking at it now. Uh, it hi highlights different roles and responsibilities uh, of the state, uh, um, the organs of state, as well as civil society. Uh, but primary, primarily for the Department of uh, Defense and Military uh, Veterans, it says um, it has overall responsibility for coordination, accountability, and implementation of cyber warfare sort of cyber defense measures in the Republic as an integral part of its national defense mandate. Um, so, uh, but on the implementation plan itself, because the issue is the implementation plan, assuming the strategy has been approved, is that um, the last time the department reported that uh, the plan 
was yet uh, to be finalized uh, because um, the department was still waiting for the broader cyber strategy uh, to be finalized. And, and that the cyber command center um, would be um, operational as soon as um, the issue of budget constraints was dealt with uh, within the department. We, we thought we, we can't uh, delay taking discussion on the matter, given uh, that already, um, you, know, uh, uh, you know, various uh, institutions in our country, including some of the major banks have been hit, um, uh, you know, uh, so it really calls for uh, higher, um, uh, you know, <clears throat> levels of um, uh, security uh, approaches, uh, as it were, because the war now is shifting from being physical uh, to, to the cyberspace. So as the National Defense Force, we can't be found wanting. I know some information may be sensitive. We don't want you to talk to the sensitive information, but just to assure that the matter is receiving attention. Uh, thank you very much. Um, Sir Jeff, do you want to make a remark before um, uh, the presentation? Chairperson, I think that uh, uh, you have summarized the matter as you uh, uh, clearly stated that our National uh, Cyber Policy Forum uh, actually assigns roles to uh, different uh, departments that, uh, uh, in terms of the roles that they have to play. And amongst those ones is the one that talks to the um, uh, implementation, uh, is the one that talks about uh, the role of the Department of Defense. So the presentation that is going to be made to the portfolio committee members is uh, giving the progress on the implementation of that uh, cyber uh, defense strategy. And uh, the, the team uh, that is here to deal with that uh, will be uh, Brigadier General M. Bogosi and also uh, Major Skakane that are going to do uh, the presentation uh, to the meeting. I hand over to the chairperson. Thank you very much. Thank you, Sir Dev. Uh, the chairperson of the Portfolio Committee on Defense and Military Veterans, our Minister of Defense and Military Veterans, Deputy Minister of Defense and Military Veterans, uh, members of the Portfolio Committee, General President, ladies and gentlemen, and Brigadier General Martin Obozi. Uh, Director Cyber Command. As myself, they have stated, I'm going to present the progress on the implementation of the cyber defense strategy. My introduction will be as follows the fifth domain of warfare, cyber which consists of the boundless spheres of technology and artificial intelligence <clears throat> and electromagnetic spectrum is rapidly developing. This prosperity and security of our nation is significantly, significantly enhanced by our use of cyberspace. Uh, same development has led to increased vulnerabilities and critical, and critical dependence on cyberspace. The threat in cyberspace have different origin, which includes, uh, amongst other things, the cyber, the state actors, and non-state actors, criminal as well as political, uh, economical, and motivated individual or organization. It is imperative. It is imperative to consider a priority uh, as priority, the vital element of developing the homegrown technologies and secure means of utilizing uh, the internet of things when it comes to the fourth industrial revolution. Cyber defense, uh, defense strategy propagates that cyber security is not a pure computer security matter. Instead, 
its view of cybersecurity as a national policy matter, since its illicit use of cyberspace, which could have diverse implications on the country's economy and the national delivery of critical services. The cabinet approved the national cybersecurity policy framework on the 7th March 2012. And it was gazetted on the 4th December 2015. It states the following on the uh, NCPF. Paragraph 18.1, in order to protect the in its interest in the event of cyber war, the cyber, de cyber defense capabilities to be built, the NS NCPF does promotes that a cyber defense strategy that is informed by the national security strategy of South Africa is developed. Chairperson, Chairperson, my apologies, but there's a huge background noise uh, coming from somewhere. I'm not quite sure from where. It's already now, um, now it's quiet. Yeah, it's quiet. Okay, over to you. Uh, please don't uh, unmute. I can see your name here. It's unmuted again. Uh, I will mention his name. Um, uh, Owen, it's Owen Apol uh, uh, Apolis or something. Uh, please mute. Over to um, General. Guided by the JCPS uh, Cyber Security Response Committee, uh, paragraph 60.5 states the following. The Department of Defense and Military Veterans has overall responsibility for coordination, accountability, and implementation of the cyber defense measures in the Republic of South Africa as an integral part of its national defense mandate. To this end, the department will develop policies and strategies pursuant to its core mandates. Due to the intensity of the cyber threat landscape, the DOD was mandated by the National Cyber Security Policy Framework to build a unified cyber command, aimed at protecting the national critical information infrastructure. Therefore, the defense intelligence was tasked to do the following to create and staff a, a cyber command, and then that the DI must pursue partners to obtain training, benchmarking standard, and technology transfer so as to capacitate the cyber command. And then the last one must let the DI must, the DI must develop a cyber defense strategy. The aim of my presentation is to present the progress report, the progress on the implementation of the cyber defense uh, strategy to the portfolio commission on defense and military veterans. My scope will deal with the following. In my scope, I'm going to deal with the cyber command main functions, uh, strategy goals, objective and challenges, challenges, and then conclude. Conclude. In this scope, what we are going to report, we are going to report the progress which has been made so far in regarding to the implementation of the cyber command uh, strategy. So far, we have to my measure to continue uh, with the presentation. Uh, good morning, um, Minister of Defense Force, Secretary of Defense, um, Chairperson, uh, members of the committee, or protocol observer. My name is uh, Major Sikakane, and I'm just going to carry on with the presentation. Before I start presenting the cy cyber command main function, it's important to understand that um, cyber, when it comes to a defense force as a war fighting entity and as defense intelligence, whose end product is delivering um, intelligence, it's a bit unique. Why we say it's a bit unique, we don't, we, we don't only focus on um, computers or digital uh, communication, which simply means communication between two computer nodes, but our battle space is the whole electromagnetic spectrum, including electronic warfare, SIGINT, you name it. Long as it's 
and a lot of all digital and it has to do with the technology that's what we do so cyber command main functions as in the cyber strategy cyber cyber command is currently able to perform the following functions we are able to do threat analysis under the analysis is detection and identification of cyber threats on the electromagnetic spectrum not only digital um, uh, space development of threat taxonomy in order to be able to predict possible threats what we do here is we, we develop our own databases on doctrines or on on the threat actors and how they act and be able to predict how they will possibly act monitoring of adversary threats tools techniques and procedures this is actually the study of their techniques reverse engineering of their tools and techniques to save time and also to be able to defend and also act offensively when needed supply chain uh, emerging threats this is the ability to to vet whatever the state um, is buying uh, to check for backdoors both in the application layer hardware layer and also in the human layer cyber command main functions too protection of uh, national key infra information infrastructure threat intelligence monitoring and the whole essay cyberspace monitoring here we're talking about the whole electromagnetic spectrum, uh, spectrum the whole ip range of south africa and also africa which is the whole of africa response to cyber attacks uh which we have, we have taken due to manpower and, and funding our stance to respond to cyber attacks is to stop them before they happen so our response which is any glove with the protection of uh, with threat intelligence and monitoring under protection of national key infrastructure is proactive so we predict we hunt for threats and we stop the threats disaster recovery and remedial action this is done by the system owner whoever is a system owner what we do we confirm the security flaws and evaluate if it's feasible the disaster recovery plan is feasible will it work or will it introduce more force yes. cyber command strategic goals the, the cyber defense strategy is anchored on the following uh, goals Goal one, cyber defense capability development. Goal two, cyber sec, uh, sec, uh, security awareness, research and training. Goal three, national and international collaboration. The progress is as follows. Strategic goal one, workforce establishment and retention. Defense intelligence was able to second members in the establishment uh, of cyber command. Objective two, develop operational capabilities. The cyber command has implemented the following. We have conducted a skill audit to determine the qualification of our members within the DOD. We did in-post training and also conducted uh, other exercises in order to identify gaps. And suitable training was identified to address the gaps and priorities. Members were also enrolled in identified courses which enable them to execute the, the task of cyber operators. If I may add, it's not a single course. There is no single cyber operators course that, that meets the standard of the requirements of the tasks of the DOD. So what we did is we found multiple courses which aid in developing the skill set, which is later going to be developed to a proficiency, which takes around 24 months. Objective three, the development of cyber command infrastructure. Development of a, a, dynamic, a dynamic evolving cyber command infrastructure has been done, but uh, what we mean by dynamic is not static. It means it changes every month. Uh, the tech of uh, last month and this month is, 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 is different. So when we develop an infrastructure, it's not the same as it was when, uh, when time passes. Cyber Command has not yet acquired the suitable facilities due to funding. Uh, this has to do with operational security. Currently, Cyber Command is accommodated in a defense intelligence headquarters with limited space. Cyber Command is uh, able to function, however, not optimally. Uh, Cyber Command is established team lab, namely the Threat Intelligence Center. This is where we do all the monitoring and identification and tracking of threats. 
R&D, Research and Development and Training Lab. This is where we um, develop new techniques and operational. Strategic uh, goal two, objective one, securitize the DOD environment. We constantly monitor external and internal threats that happens on a daily basis. Objective two, digitize the military, not yet achieved due to manpower and funding. Objective three, weaponize the DOD, not yet achieved uh, due to manpower. Objective four, develop research and development innovation capacity, which is very difficult to do because Cyber Command must engage relevant stakeholders with a proven track record in the cybersphere. There are a lot of technological um, uh, stakeholders out there, but they don't have a cooking clue when it comes to having a track record in the sphere. <laughs> Strategic goal three, objective one, monitoring incident response and information sharing. Cyber Command through Cyber Response Committee is working together with other government entities when it comes to incident response and info, information sharing. Objective two, uh, defense digital diplomacy. Cyber Command is part of the SADC Defense Intelligence Cybersecurity Subcommittee. We recently participated in the curriculum development in Lusaka. This is where we um, actually developed the whole curriculum, the 24 months curriculum, which was led uh, by uh, Cyber Command. The following are the challenges that Cyber Command face. Infrastructure. Cyber Command needs a conducive infrastructure that will accommodate a, full, a fully fledged Cyber Command capability. This means a standalone capability that's not uh, housed with does not house with any other entity. Funding, the funding is with regards to equipment, training and personnel. Equipment, procurement and maintenance of cyber equipment needs adequate funding as most of the equipment, including software and hardware is available abroad and is depending on a dollar rent exchange. This also goes for R&D equipment, the, the, the tool sets, the, the space, you, you, you don't find all of them within the country, you find them abroad. Training, cyber specialized training is, is, is very expensive and it's a niche, uh, niche environment. And when you find the people, it's not normal institutions and funding, funding it is becoming a challenge. Personnel, this is about retention of the personnel, um, implementation of the military dispensation for cyber members. And lastly, the approval of the cyber defense strategy and structure. <clears throat> Conclusion, Cyber Command is currently partially operational since it's not yet fully capacitated. Adequate funding is needed for Cyber Command. The defense cyber, uh, cyber defense strategy is still under review. Thank you. Thank you, Chairperson. Uh, just to add a recent the Cyber Command have moved from CSIR to the Defense Intelligence uh, Headquarters. And at the present moment, uh, we moved there, we moved there in April. This have an impact on the implementation of some of the things which the Cyber Command we wanted to do. But I can say that there have been a progress because since we moved to, uh, to the Defense Intelligence uh, Headquarters, we were able to set up the cleanups that my colleagues have elaborated. And then I can say that although we are not fully capacitated, but we can operate as a cyber command. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you, Zaki. Chairperson, that concludes uh, this presentation. We are open to questions and remarks. I'm not quite sure. I don't hear or see the chairperson. Um... Hi, Mr. Murray. 
Yes, sir. Uh, yes, Peter. He's been kicked out and he's just joining us again now. Okay, so we'll just wait for him that he can just lead that. Thank you. Thanks, Peter. I'm not sure, Brian, you suggest we wait for him or must we continue? Uh, Mr. Mutle, Brian has also been picked out. Okay. Uh, uh, Mr. Mutle, Mr. Mutle, Mr. Mutle, why don't you take us uh, forward that we can at least um, start to interact with, uh, with the department? Brian is back. Yeah, he's back now. Okay. Yeah, may, may, maybe colleagues, let's uh, uh, just continue. Uh, I'll okay. just step in for for the chair, and uh, he will continue when uh, he is back in the meeting. We received the presentation, colleagues. Uh, uh, they are done presenting. It's now an opportunity for members to interact with uh, the presentation. Uh, my hand has been raised, um, Mr. Mutri. Okay, uh, Honorable Mare, you may uh, take the platform. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you for the um, for the presentation. Um, this was this was long awaiting, but it, there's an enormous lot of shortcomings and concerns that we are pick or that I've picked up from the presentation, and I think this is long overdue that this must be. This must receive a much, much higher priority in, in, in the way that we see the Department of Defense uh, going forward and protecting our integrity and, and complying with the Constitution. Just to, just to raise a number of issues, um, I am glad it was mentioned that this is not only about so-called anti-hacking threats by others, so in other words, threats to our computer systems, threats to our information systems. Yes, that's part of it, but it's only a portion of it. In terms of the current and future way that the defense force should be, should be operating is how to use cyber um, capabilities for protection, um, and especially in our case for monitoring, reconnaissance and reporting um, so that we can use a rapid response team to go and, 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 uh, and investigate where there are possible transgressions. We know, for instance, at our land border and maritime border uh, situation, we, we know very little in terms of what is going on because it's just humanly impossible for, for uh, people patrolling the, the land borders to know everything and to pick up everything, and most certainly on the maritime uh, uh, arena as well. So, so that is, in my, my humble opinion, where we should focus and reprioritize um, how to use cyber capabilities for, for, for defense purposes. And, and yes, the way that you, that you um, uh, uh, um, go and, 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 and get intelligence um, and collect intelligence and how to use that to, to position yourself. That is very, very important. I think that should require a lot more um, attention and hopefully a priority from the minister, from the SECDEF, from the chief of the SNDF. And hopefully they have made it clear that National Treasury must accept the fact that uh, a cyber capability um, doesn't come easy and doesn't come cheap in necessarily. But in terms of, my question is is really to SECDEF and to the minister on 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 reprioritization. Minister has said a couple of times we cannot go on the same way we have done for so very long. We have to do it differently. This is the one of the things that we have to do differently. This is a force multiplier that can assist the Defence Force tremendously to have a much more efficient use of, of our equipment and capabilities. Um, I just wanted to raise one or two issues. Where it says that um, we, we have not achieved objective two of our strategic objectives, um, you know, how and when will, we, will that be addressed? Um, for me, it is quite important that we need to address those important issues 
objective two and objective three. Mm -hmm. Nothing has been done. I know that money is a problem, but how are we progressing in terms of planning and determining what we are needing? Um, and then especially, have we started to talk with other nations in terms of, of cooperation? Um, you know, when it is about cyber technology for, for, for reconnaissance and monitoring and reporting, you know, um, we can work together. Um, and you can sign in or sign out in terms of certain functions and information that you require. It is also in other, we know that other nations are already have got satellites, you know, around South Africa and above South Africa. So they know already of much of this information is to what extent are we accessing and tapping into that information? So my question is then partly to what extent have we started to talk uh, and discuss with other nations uh, in SADC, but also those many, many countries that has got that have got um, uh, defense attaches in South Africa and diplomatic missions in South Africa, uh, because they have got the access and they've got the capabilities that we need that we know that we cannot afford. So, so those cooperations is important for me. And to what extent have they started to develop a, a, a strategy um, and implementation plans in terms of border and mar maritime reconnaissance, monitor monitoring, um, and then to rapid re response. Um, I also would very much like to know, and I know this is sensitive and you know we, we must arrange something to, to, to determine what is the kind of cyber command uh, that we need, strategy that we need, infrastructure that we need, and, and how much will this cost? Because only if we know that, then we know when we sit with priorities and we must decide on which to leave out and, and which to concentrate on, um, uh, uh, then, then, then we know the full picture. And, and I would very much like to know when that will be done and whether we can get that. Um, yeah, and, and especially National Treasury and Cabinet is, is very important because we must get them behind us. So that that, that is where the minister will come in and say, Diff, um, but thank you very much so far. Um, we, we, we just need to move much, much faster on this one. Thank you very much. All right, so, so, thank you very much. Any other question or from colleagues? Yes, can, right. can I say can I say something, uh, Honorable uh, Mukher? Thank you very much. Oh, you're you're back. Uh, you'll, uh, yes, take, you'll, you'll no, take no. Over. Yes, thank you very much, uh, Honorable Mukher. I will take over after this comment. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> the last time we had a, a briefing uh, from the Department of uh, Defense on uh, this uh, cyber warfare strategy was in twenty. Um, 2019. Um, let me just confirm the date. Uh, no, it was in March. Um, March, March, March 2020. Um, the, 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 the presenter, uh, the department uh, said uh, they needed about 800 million rand. Uh, that was the 2018 estimate over a three-year period uh, to get um, the required uh, capability, um, cyber defense capability. Um, but um, today we are <clears throat> still get uh, receiving the information that uh, the, the defense capability is, is there, but not uh, fully uh, operational due to um, uh, uh, funding uh, challenges. And that um, uh, equipment uh, needed uh, to, um, <clears throat> you know, for the capability uh, is not uh, adequate um and, and 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 so on in other words we're still on strategic object strategic goal um 
um, objective number one, um, uh, which is the implementation, what you call <clears throat> the development of a cyber defense uh, capability. Um, I, I want to take a, a, a concrete view on the matter. That um, a, a report that says uh, cyber, cyber command is not um, functioning optimally. Um, it, it's a, how many years later? Two years later. It suggests to me that um, leaking has been done since the last time. Maybe a direct question to uh, the presenters is how much uh, is set aside uh, for this um, um, uh, function? Uh, last time, you the estimate was 800 million rand over three years, and has the funding uh, to this uh, entity or uh, to this capability improved? since the last time we spoke about it. And um, uh, maybe let, let's look at that for now so that we, we <clears throat> get a, a, an understanding as to whether uh, this capability will ever uh, be fully implemented um, within the Department of Defense. I would just want to leave it at that for now. Uh, thank you, thank you very much. Uh, over to you. Uh, let me just check if there are any hands. It doesn't look like there's any more hands. Maybe, Chair, uh, yeah. before you um, uh, take okay. over, let, let me also uh, take this opportunity and uh, raise my question. Uh, maybe uh, from the presentation, let me start there, that we had with them, uh, as you indicated, it was in 2019. They indicated to us, uh, uh, demonstrated their capabilities in terms of uh, tiers, from tier one, so forth and so on. They they know better. Uh, I don't want to distort it, but in terms of their tiers uh, capabilities, uh, how far have they moved since that time uh, to ensure that uh, their capabilities improves uh, to meet or to match the international uh, standard and to what an extent are they also uh, selling their services to the private sector because uh, my understanding is that uh, uh, the private sector might also be vulnerable in terms of uh, cyber crime. But once they have uh, developed themselves uh, in terms of those capabilities, they should be able to extend their services to the private sector for them to generate uh, income because we can't be always uh, crying foul uh, about the budget uh, constraints that we all know whilst we can uh, uh, use these capabilities to also generate some um, income uh, for, and use that income to develop further to, so that we are at the tier that is, uh, uh, will be internationally uh, uh, competitive to defend uh, uh, the country and counter any cyber a crime that it might be perpetuated against uh, uh, our country. Uh, maybe lastly, in terms of uh, your your research and development, how 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 far are you in terms of uh, investing into uh, res your research and development to to keep your 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 cyber capabilities? Uh, uh, up to date. Thank you very much, Chair. You may take over. Thank you very much, uh, Honorable Mutle. Uh, over to you, um, uh, General Mkopozi. Chair President, uh, my colleagues will assist me on the uh, answering of some of the questions. Let me say thank you for the comment from the Honorable Mare. And I want to say that as cyber command, as we have stated that 
we are part and parcel of the SADAC Sub Defense Committee on Cyber Security. Is where we engage each other with the SADAC countries so that we can see uh, how can we cooperate with each other and how can we develop and also to see in this uh, SADAC region whether if they have something which we don't have, uh, we can share even the information with them. At the present moment, I can say yes, there is an engagement uh, with the SADAC committee and even with uh, some of the defense attache around here uh, in South Africa when it comes to the uh, cyber, uh, cyber defense measures. And then on the issue of uh, the structure and the, the manual, the implementation, I can say that it's true that uh, implement, I'm talking about this 800 uh, million, that it's true that the implementation plan was presented with those figures at the present moment of eight, more than 800 uh, a million uh, two, years, uh, two years in 2019. I can say that yes, uh, at the present moment, we have not yet get all that money, but uh, because we understand that defense force every year, the budget is being cut, but with the little which we have as the defense, as the cyber command, uh, we are able to watch, uh, to, uh, to operate uh, at the present moment. And another thing which I wanted uh, to say, I think Mr. Maria, most of the honor, Mr. Maria, or uh, all the things you was just a uh, Comment and we are taking we are taking note of the thing which we have uh, stated that our importance when it comes to the uh, the borderline and maritime uh, border uh, monitoring that we look at that so that we can be able uh, to see where can we chip in so that we can be able uh, to see that uh, the cyber command contribute uh, to the security of uh, our country. I will hand over to my colleague just to answer. Other questions. Um, um, when it comes to the issue of objectives uh, uh, two and, uh, and, and, and and three not not being done, and what is done, and man time and border um, um, monitoring and uh, also battlefield uh, air aiding um, uh, our forces uh, when it comes to cyber, all of that has been planned. All of that has been costed. It's just an issue of funding. And when we talk about manpower, is to find um, a, a, a person suitable to work in the cyber environment. It's, it's also very difficult to find a person. You you can have a um, hundred people that you bring an interview, and you will find no one because of the, the person must be a dynamic person. The person must be a person who thinks out of the box. It must be a person who is able to figure figure out things that other people don't really think about. So when it comes to the um, objective not yet done, the planning, the planning has been done for the last four to five years, and it's, it, 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 keeps, it keeps being uh, updated, improved, and, and costed, and uh, hence the 800 million uh, figure. That figure doesn't talk only on training, it talks also borderline, maritime, everything that uh, was mentioned. When it comes to the level of uh, tiers, um, first of all, the tiers involve the following um, defensive capabilities and personnel, uh, offensive capabilities and personnel, and also collective uh, uh, capabilities and personnel. But now to get to tier one, uh, it also goes back to funding because tier one is, is all about campaigns. If you look at um, a classic example of Apple or Huawei, which is which is a campaign that is a tier one campaign where, whereby you create your own products, you create your own uh, infrastructure, you create your, your own your own software commercially, and then from there you use it as a collection tool or a, a war fighting propaganda tool or whatever. So to get to tier one, you can have the personnel, you can have um, the plans in place, but the funding becomes an issue, and it's not about equipment when it comes to funding. It's about the campaign, because if you use a laptop for a single campaign, you, you must get rid of the uh, uh, laptop. I'm just using it for example, and use a new one. It doesn't matter. If you, are, if you are using it for a day, for a single campaign, 
then that job must never be used again. It can be disposed mm. elsewhere because now it comes back an offset issue. The main issue here is funding campaigns and funding and development of personnel. So planning, when it comes to planning of all the questions that you've asked, the levels and tiers, members have been trained, bootstrap 45 members who are very capable, currently operating fully at a, at a, a tier two, which we call red team and uh, blue team. These members are able to, 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 to respond to any threat. These members are able to engage any, any target if needs be. But the issue always boils down to campaign costs. I thank you. Chairperson, um, if I may come in, um, I just wanted to respond to some of the questions about the digitization of the military. I think if we step back and look at the mandate of defense, it is to protect and defend. So it means not only do we protect from a defense point of view, but it is defending the state itself and its economy. And the power of cybersecurity is that it has that capacity of bringing down even economies of the country if they are not properly uh, uh, shielded. But also we need to look at it from a business continuity point of view, because even if you are hacked and you are not able to recover, then you are not able to carry out your work. So whatever we do from defense side, yes, it is the role that has been assigned to DOD by the National Cyber Policy Framework, because all the departments, and we look at this matter as well from a JCPS uh, point of view. It is also very important that uh, we invest a lot around the issues of skills development because also if we have the hardware and we have people that don't, are not properly trained it becomes very difficult to manage a, a, a that hardware i know that say uh, we, we talk about the funding being an issue when we were looking at this matter as well from a jcps uh, point of view we came to a conclusion that this is one project that needs to be run nationally in the sense that you can't have one department pulling this way and doing its thing and the other one to the other side. Because what it would mean is that each and every department will then buy its own hardware in terms of dealing with that. And if they can be sourcing that from different role players. So it was then decided at the time that a, 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 the ministers of justice a, of a, a cluster at the time went to cabinet and cabinet announced that they will find money. We needed to consolidate what would be needed by each of the major role players and then uh, acquire the hardware that will then feed into everybody and everybody knows what their role is, is going to be. I do agree, I think, with the sentiments that uh, we need to also focus a lot on uh, development of research and also to be innovative. You cannot be in a cyberspace and, and not want to go bespoke, because if you go bespoke, it's your own, you, you develop, and then you keep on improving on it. And I think, uh, Chairperson, right now, there is nobody who doesn't have email. And email was started by the American Defense Force, and they tried it and only released that after 10 years to say this is what we have. So it means that when we have the right resources, we can be able uh, 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 to deal with that because then innovation becomes very critical and then uh, also building our own uh, skills. And then we are able then to say that we innovate and therefore we can then be able to take that and also see in future where it takes us because it does provide that ability of uh, generating income. But even if you were to do that, you have to be comfortable with the products that uh, you set up uh, uh, yourself. So I thought that it is important to do so because even when we uh, uh, digitize, it must be an integrated system that we are able to rep replicate so that even in the instance that something happens, 
nobody will even know that uh, uh, something has gone wrong because then your your disaster recovery uh, mechanism come into play quickly. And that's where we talk about business continuity. So I, I think that uh, this is something that we need to continue looking at uh, very closely and then see how we deal with it. But just thought I needed to also bring the perspective that it is something that is actually looked into by the entire security cluster with roles defined for each of the members of the security cluster. Thank you very much, Chair. Thank you very much, uh, Sektef. Uh, I think we can wrap up uh, now uh, <clears throat> on, 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 on the understanding that um, uh, the, for, for the capability to be fully operational, it requires um, a financial injection. And um, <clears throat> so we want to appeal again to, to, to you, uh, Sektef and, and the team, to really uh, consider the issue of funding uh, to this, uh, um, you know, objective uh, favorably, uh, because, like you have just indicated, uh, the the <clears throat> the importance uh, <clears throat> of the institution uh, in the whole. Um, you know, um, uh, set up. Uh, so we, we can't uh, afford to have it uh, remain at the state that uh, it, it is. There has been some attempt uh, to bring it up to um, uh, functionality, but it is not at a state where we can say it is <clears throat> fully developed and uh, we as a country can rely on it um, uh, we're not yet there and uh, let's let's look at uh, uh, funding funds funds uh, to support it uh, you can operate with uh, such an important <clears throat> strategic uh, uh, capability without the necessary uh, equipment um, uh, without the necessary um, R and D uh, uh, financial injection uh, without the necessary uh, ex expertise, and um, you have it, uh, but uh, it will not be what uh, ideally the country is as strategic as ours. In the, when you consider our role <clears throat> on the continent. Uh, be at the level uh, at which we are now. So I want to leave it at that and uh, for now and, and thank uh, the, the presenters uh, uh, tonight, but we should thank you for to, uh, what we have achieved since the last time. I think there's been some movement, but I can't say uh, the movement uh, has reached the level where we can um, be satisfied uh, as, 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 as the entity. Maybe the last min, uh, comment on this would be from the minister before we close and move to the next item. Uh, if the minister uh, wants to make a comment. Chair, I don't really have to make any comment. I think you covered most of my points. I think that um, uh, some of the points I had wanted to make have been touched on. We live in a region and therefore there is no way we can continue thinking that we will secure ourselves and be active in the cyberspace without one um, networking with the countries in the in the in the in the in the region. So what the point I'm making is that you do need some coordination, but at the same time you do need to have something in your back pocket. Um, you do need what you have just referred to, the R&D, that injection is necessary, but not just internally within the department, you also need to be coordinating with the uh, institutions of higher learning. Our unfortunate thing is that um, there are two main countries that are giants are squeezing us in between. You've got America on the one side and China on the other side, and that will affect our agility. And the last point I want to make is that we as South Africa will 
develop our cyber uh, strategy and activities within the ambit of the AU. We are duty bound to do that because that is what and that is who we are. Thank you, Chair. Th thank you so much, uh, Minister. We'll uh, then leave it at that for now. Uh, thanks for the presentation. We now uh, have two uh, presentations uh, remaining. Uh, the first presentation is on the implementation of the exit uh, mechanism. Uh, I don't know who is going to take us through uh, that presentation. And uh, <clears throat> I, it's about nine uh, slides. May, may I request that um, <clears throat> we, we focus on um, the slides that talks to the uh, current strength and uh, and the strength that uh, will bring you within um, your, your allocation and um, and and what it will take you uh, to get to the strength uh, in terms of um, the exit mechanism if we don't spend this money uh, 100 billion, 1 billion rand was allocated to us and if we don't spend it uh, chances are we may not get the 800 million rand that is um, uh, uh, promised uh, in the new financial year. So I've got to spend this money and the results have got to be shown that um, the money was spent in a manner that, um, you know, uh, enables us to save some money in order to remain within uh, the, the allocation as it were. Uh, over to you, uh, uh, Chief HR or someone in, in the office. Thank you so much. So, Jeff, you want to say something before we start? Jeff, thank you very much. Um, yes, we will uh, focus on that, give the progress report that has been made, and then also the measures uh, that uh, we are taking as the department to reduce our HR cost, which is the only area where we are overspending as, a, as the department. And as you correctly point out, uh, Chairperson, the department has been given 1.8 billion rand, which means this financial year, we had a billion rand uh, to utilize for the limited exit mechanism. And then uh, the other 800 million is for the following uh, uh, financial year. And that uh, 800 million will be given to us, subject to us being able to deliver on this one. So Chair, uh, the one billion uh, that he has been received is the commitment from a uh, treasury. Then we have also about 865 million that uh, we have to find within the department, which then takes into account the, 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 the benefits that will be paid to those members that will be exiting. So when you look at it in as much as we've been given a million, the total amount is going to be 1.865 billion uh, uh, and 865 million because uh, the 865 million is what will be the liability of the department in, in, in that execution of the MEM. So I would hand over to General Mood Kavane, uh, uh, the Major General Kavane, to uh, introduce uh, the presentation. Thank you, Chair. Thank, thank you, Chef F. Chair, Minister of Defense and Military Affairs, Honorable Tandi Mudise, Deputy Minister of Defense, Honorable Tavar Makweka, members of the Portfolio Committee on Defense. Uh, my name is Major General Mutabani, Deputy Chief Human Resources. I'm standing in for Admiral who, due to other commitment, was unable to be in this meeting. Um, I am with Brigadier General Richard, who will be doing the presentations. And as, as requested by you, we'll just focus on the slides that you, you have directed us to focus on. And, uh, Chair, the SECDEF has given the background to the presentation, and I don't think it would be necessary for me to once again give that background. On, the, on that note, Chair, I will then request General Richards to do the presentation. Thank you. Okay. <coughs> Honorable uh, Chairperson, uh, the Minister of Defense and Military Veterans, the Deputy Minister, 
Secretary for Defense, members of the Portfolio Committee, and um, officials of the Department of Defense present. <coughs> the tasking um, of the third uh, uh, term of the Portfolio Committee on Defense, in terms of this brief, was to provide an update uh, in respect of the implementation of an exit mechanism and additional measures to reduce and and uh, reduce the uh, cost pressures of the compensation of employees. Um, next slide. The aim of the brief will cover uh, the areas of the tasking and the scope uh, deliberate on the progress uh, of, of implementation. The context of the compensation of employees underfunding lies within the past and cabinet and government's decision to appropriate below the current strength of the DOD and SADA, the compensation of employees and the effect of it, as you uh, glean from the screen, is from 2017 to 20, uh, 2017, 2018 financial year up to 2021, 22 financial year, accumulatively an irregular expenditure has occurred of 10.1 billion rand. It is foreseen that given the existing allocation, MTF allocation for the 22 uh, uh, MTF period, a further increase is foreseen due to the oscillating nature of the appropriation uh, forecast by, uh, by government in respect of the compensation of employees. And that uh, would have an escalation and an increase into the future, placing significant strain on the Department of Defense in terms of uh, securing appropriate military capabilities to conduct successful military operations aligned to the constitutional mandate. Co consequent and subsequent to the irregular expenditure within compensation of employees, the Department have made application for condonement. However, National Treasury, as indicated in bullet number three, has elected to keep such condonement in abeyance until such time that significant progress as is implemented with regards to the HR interventions as contemplated. Right? Mr. Chairperson, honorable members, uh, Minister of Defense, the Portfolio Committee, together with the with National Treasury representatives and the Department of Defense, has uh, decided on the course of actions to implement HR interventions to limit and reduce the cost pressures the underfunding of the compensation uh, of employees have resulted in. Um, and, and the Minister of Defense and Military Veterans subsequently issued a directive on the 31st of March 2021 to effect such course of action as deliberated upon within the Portfolio Committee on Defense. And that directive sought to reach equilibrium between what the Department of Defense budget, HR budget requires and the appropriated compensation of employees. And listed in bullet number three are the main interventions that, were, that was concurred to for implementation by the department, which is an average uh, plan for an average strength of 73,000 over, over the MT, recruit military skills development system in text every alternate calendar year, reduce the reserve force mandates to 1,9 million mandates, cap increases of regimental, operational, and allowances paid in view of scarce skills, as well as to reactivate the implementation of exit strategies, namely the mobility exit mechanism for soldiers and employee initiate severance package for civilian personnel of the, of the department. Most notably, the department remains committed to implement these cost saving measures. And during the course of this deliberation, we'll report on the progress made thus far, as well as the department remains engaged with National Treasury and other stakeholders to find a solution to implement and find, yeah, to find a solution to the current impasse of underfunding the compensation of employees. Uh, that being said, current correspondence between ministers of finance and department, uh, uh, minister of defense and military veterans 
have, have been issued and, and these engagements will, will forthcome uh, uh, resolve to, to, to address this, this solution. So, uh, as with any plan, and given uh, our, our, the course of action that we together uh, decided upon between the Department of Defense, uh, the Portfolio Committee on Defense and Military Veterans, as well as National Treasury, the, the, the plan, as, as foreseen, would implement uh, uh, strict uh, reductions and curtail, especially the reserve force utilization uh, of, of, of the SA, South African National Defense Force. And it was foreseen that it would have a, a significant impact uh, if the reserve force mandates are reduced from 2.6 million mandates annually to 1.9 million mandates, uh, um, uh, as is the case of this financial. And most notable, is, 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 the, is the inability that we found in the first quarter of the financial year uh, in respect of reserve force utilization, um, being that the South African National Defense Force is unable to meet the planned reductions from 2.6 million mandates to 1.9 million mandates. And it's largely as a result of the current military operations tempo, um, the requirement to meet administrative obligations for compliance and, and more specifically to secure our military installations by with the utilization of increased uh, reserve force guards, which is an operational security matter. Inclusive of, of the challenges that we, we as a department face in implementing the HR interventions are the forecast administrative delays for implementing the exit strategies namely the employee initiated the severance package, as well as the mobility exit mechanism for, for soldiers. And together, uh, the, the Department of Defense, the Portfolio Committee on uh, Defense and Military Veterans and National Treasury has foreseen that uh, the, the, the separation of soldiers by way of specifically the severance package will not necessarily translate in the first quarter uh, in, in term, uh, as a result. Um, and, and, and the department will continue in the endeavor to, to run a second and third uh, uh, rounds of elect, election identification of potential members to separate by way of this exit mechanism to induce um, cost savings measure, but more specifically to um, uh, result in, in a potential rejuvenation of the force. Next one. Um, I would, uh, would like to pause um, at, the, at this point of our presentation, denoting the, the, the status report that uh, is, pro is provided to the Portfolio Committee on Defense as a condition set for implementing this course of action, as well as to confirm that such a report has been submitted by the Sec Secretary for Defense to National Treasury in line with the condition <coughs> set for for funding not only the exit mechanism, but also to implement uh, and monitor its implementation of these HR interventions. So I draw your attention then to serial number 1A, which relates to the first intervention of maintaining an average strength of 73,000 for the MTEF period. And as you would see, the uh, serial number 1A focuses on managing the approved post structure of the Department of Defense having implemented the deactivation of accumulatively 14,693 posts that have been vacant for a period of five years and longer and unfunded due to the, the lower rate of appropriating the compensation of employees. In terms of serial number 1B, uh, as well as related to the maintaining the average strength of 73,000, our fourth strength have, re have reduced by 1,568, uh, being the comparison be between the actual strength per month uh, as well as the planned strength. And, and it is foreseen that the reduction in the, in the force strength, as denoted in the red, will continue to grow uh, as we reach March 2023, being the number of people that would uh, separate from the Department of Defense, as well as our inability to, 
uh, appoint according to plan uh, to fill vacancies that have become vacant in the course of previous financial years. In terms of serial number two, um, the reduction of the reserve force mandates to 1.9 million mandates, uh, the South African National Defense Force remain hard pressed to meet uh, the, the target of 1.9 million mandates for the financial year. And as, as discussed, it, it, is, it is placing a hard, uh, placing significant pressure on the South African National Defense Force, more specifically, to, con to continue to deliver on conducting successful military operations. And in that respect, um, uh, accumulatively to the month of July, um, it has exceeded um, by 218,000 mandates, the originally planned mandates for the month of July. Um, in terms of serial number three, recruitment of military skills development index of alternate calendar years, um, according to the chief SAMD priorities for, for such index, we note that we are in compliance with firstly, the, the plan of recruiting 1,997 originally, and now uh, on straight 1,985. But its distribution is what, what needs to be significantly noted is that most of the MSDS intake uh, is accounted for in the combat and combat support environments where to support our, our, our capacity uh, to train for the deployment of soldiers in support of military operations. In terms of serial number four, the department has successfully kept the increases of uh, allowances, uh, paid in view of scarce skills, regimental and operational allowances, and that have, uh, for, that have had a forecast saving of uh, approximately 67 million rand, and that would continue over the course of the next three years as, as planned. And more, more now specifically to the task to address the reactivation of exit strategies. We will focus first on the severance mechanism as applicable to civilian personnel of the DOD, noting that 145 applications were received uh, as at the, the 3rd of August, of which 10 applications were not approved or did not meet the criteria. 110 were approved by the Minister of Defence and Military Veterans. Seven were, is awaiting approval. Six was forwarded to the DPSA for concurrence, and three applications are being, uh, is, is currently being processed. And um, as can be noted in terms of the number of personnel and these are personnel that have separated in the month of April to July, um, uh, cumulatively, 22 EISP uh, civilian personnel have se separated to the value of 633,000 rand paid in terms of GPF liabilities and in terms of the departmental benefit liabilities to, to remember uh, 2,8 million. Um, and in terms of uh, uh, in implementation of the mobility exit mechanism for soldiers, 433. Um, uh, offers have been approved by the Minister of Defence and Military Veterans, of which 207 is accounted for in the SA Army, uh, 76 in the SA Air Force, uh, 95 in the SA Navy, um, 43 in the SA Military Health Service, um, 10 in the Defence uh, uh, Intelligence Division, and 2 in Chaplain General's Division. The estimated cost liability in terms of the GEPF um, is 280 million rand or translated as 26% of the 1 billion rand allocation uh, potentially being spent uh, as a result of these approvals. And in terms of the severance cost, 243 million rand or equating to 27% of the um, 668 uh, million rand uh, uh, liability of, to, of the department. And just to pause at, at this moment, next slide, is that once the, the funding strategy of uh, the exit uh, mechanism for soldiers, um, the Portfolio Committee of, of Defense and Military Veterans should note that the 
The Department of Defense have met all the conditions set by National Treasury to submit uh, exit plans uh, and exit strategies, costings, as, as, as well as um, to, to be able to report. And these plans were evaluated and reviewed by National Treasury and uh, the correspondence received from National Treasury on 30 March indicated that the 1 billion allocation for the implementation of the mobility exit mechanism must be as exclusively uh, utilized to pay or make good the GEPF liability. And it authorized the department to reprioritize internally to fund the departmental liability of 868 million rand, as indicated on the slide. However, the point must, must be made that these are additional reprioritizations uh, of the operating budget, which places the, the South African National Defense Force on the back foot because our military capabilities continues to be eroded and the reprioritization has proven itself ineffective and, and uh, cannot be sustained over the course of, of this implementation. And so the, the efficacy of conducting successful uh, military operations are, are, are systematically reduced, um, being that the department is, 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 is reprioritizing re from its operating budget to fund a liability that should otherwise be fund, funded by, by national treasury. And, and, um, and it places a, a huge strain on, on, on the department's operating budgets uh, going forward into the implementation. That being said, the Department of Defense continues to monitor the, its implementation of all interventions on a monthly basis, and it reports on a quarterly basis to both National Treasury as well as to the Portfolio Committee on Defense. Thank you. In terms of our forecast, uh, in year and 2023 compensation of employees uh, allocation and its impact on planning uh, for the future, we should we note that in the year 2022, in terms of serial number one, the allocation was 30.6 billion rand. In the financial year 2023-24, it is 29.6 billion rand. 24-25 is 3.9 billion rand, and for the financial year 25-26 is 32.3 billion rand. And and here one can observe the oscillating and, and uh, nature of the appropriate forecast appropriation, as well as the intended reduction of the uh, compensation of employees, which uh, plays into the space of the increasing forecast uh, irregular expenditure of, of the compensation of employees um, uh, uh, amounts uh, to be increased in the future. So in terms of the projected expenditure uh, for for the financial year 22-23, it is our budget requirement is 33.3 billion rand. Uh, for 23-24, it is 32.5 billion rand, and 24-25 is 32.4 billion rand, and 25-26 a forecast 32.4 billion rand. And this, but uh, the the budget requirement is is forecast on on the back of national treasury guidelines and the forecast uh, collective uh, agreements uh, due to be uh, signed uh, only for this year, but it may also impact in the future. And so translating the, the budget requirement, the allocation and the HR intervention impact, one notes that we continue to make a plan to, to maintain an average strength of 73,000, being for the year 2022-23, a force strength of 72, 1,986 for 23-24, a force strength of 72,864 72, for 24-25, 72,596, uh, seven, sorry, and 25-26, 70,946, well within the planned and approved plan of, of, of the Department of Defense uh, together with the Portfolio Committee and National Treasury. However, when we focus what would be the actual strength in terms of our planning, given what we know 
in terms of the oscillating nature of the compensation of employees under funding, as well as curtailing the number of personnel to be replacing our personnel losses, we see that we will continue a force strength reduction over the MTIF and outer years, resulting in a forecast force strength of 68,220 in the financial year uh, 25 26. And that would place a, a strain on the HR requirement for, 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 to support military capabilities in order that that capabilities are successfully employed during military operations. We also draw Timothy's attention to the, uh, the, to the forecast impact of these interventions, including the exit mechanism, drafting down the forecast deficit to approximate 35 million rand in the financial year 25 26. In terms of reserve force planning and budgeting for the, for the consequent wages, we maintain a trajectory in our plan of 1.9 million, uh, million man days for reserves. However, just based on the first quarter results of utilization, um, it is more likely that we, the department will be unable to, to reach these levels in this force utilization. Um, to conclude, the Department of Defense and the South African National Defense Force remain resolute to meet uh, the, uh, to meet planned HR interventions as contemplated by the ministerial director. Uh, thank you. Uh, thank you very much uh, for for the presentation and um, uh, colleagues. Uh, the presentation is on the table for uh, discussion. Uh, I recognize, but before I recognize Mr. Mare, I just need to uh, uh, place this uh, on record. Um, <clears throat> last, last uh, between from the first of April, twenty twenty. Uh, to end of March uh, 2021. Um, you, you say in your annual report uh, that uh, you began April 2020 with 73,987 uh, uh, members, employees, sorry, employees, and, uh, and that uh, the appointments and transfers into the department is 777, and the terminations and transfers out of the department was uh, 2565. There's, those were the, the numbers. Uh, but you still overspent your budget. So in other words, um, with 73,000, uh, strength, you overspent your, your budget, I think, by close to uh, uh, two, um, two, 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 two billion rand. Now, the, the question I have is, what is this number uh, that will enable you to remain within the budget allocation? I see the projections that you, you are making, um, a General, uh, that for instance, um, this is what you are saying, that 2022-2023 uh, <clears throat> uh, and the factoring, uh, the implementation of the exit uh, strategy uh, are likely to remain with 71,418. Uh, and that uh, in the second year uh, of the implementation of this exit mechanism, you are likely to have 71,472. And that in 2024, 2025, uh, around 69,000. Now, what is this metric figure that we are looking at? Um, I understand your, 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 your projection and all that, and, but they don't give me comfort that uh, the figure that you are working around it will keep you within the budget uh, allocation. Now, having said that, let me recognize Mr. Maran. Uh, thank you very much, Chairperson. Thank you very much for the presentation. <clears throat> I want to start off by saying thank you very much. I mean, this is not uh, 
a new information. It was also not something that is comforting us. Uh, and then I want to say, Chairperson, I fully agree with you um, because we can go on with this overspending and we know that so far National Treasury hasn't given us any additional funding uh, and it's probably unlikely that they will do. Um, so we are just exacerbating our problem and challenges. So I would also like to know, you know, to keep within that, that approved budget, not the projected expenditure, the approved budget. How much will that be? Will, will that, the actual strength that we can afford, will that be 68,000 uh, or 60, uh, 68,000 this year? Or will it be 65,000? Or will it be 69,000? So that we know how much in terms of, of actual strength we're actually sitting with, with, with let's say over budget. Or, or in excess of the budget that we can that we can afford, that is very important because then we are talking about the the realities and what we are facing. Because the next point is is um, to go on and give us 2023 mandates for reserve force is still 1.98, and the next next year the same and the same. While we know already that by July we have spent overspent by 213 thousand mandates. Now, in terms of the first quarter, multiply that by four very easily. And then you see, we are not going to end at, at, at the 2.7 million where the minister has cut down to 1.9. We will most probably reach 3 million um, mandate, million reserve force mandates. So in other words, we have to deal with the realities. And as long as we have got a situation where we do not get additional funding for non-budgeted deployments and projects, then this problem will continue. If we can get to a situation, Minister, that any deployment in the future and currently that is not planned for and that is not budgeted for and that we do not have the funds, if it is justified like we had with Prosper, the president must allow and approve additional funding from National Treasury. Then we haven't got a problem. But as long as we proceed to deploy uh, so easily without providing the resources, then we're going to have bigger and bigger problems. We know at this stage in Mozambique, the fact that, that the soldiers have been deployed for a full year, 1,494 strength, is going to have a major impact on the reserve force and also on the on the cost of employees because there are additional allowances that is driving that cost up and we must factor that in otherwise you know we we we, we are fooling ourselves and we will have this problem continuously and only blame it on on deployments and additional additional um, operations uh, and 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 we know already about this so we cannot just Keep, keep back and not addressing that. We have to do that and we have to know that and we have to bring that into account. I want to know, Minister, and I don't want to preempt what will happen in the, in the medium term expenditure framework um, announcement, but if we know that there will be additional funding allocated and provided for specifically projects like, like, like Vukela, then, then we know that we don't have to, don't have to worry about that and complain about that. But as long as we have got figures like this, we have got major problems. Then I also want to ask about MIM. We know that the current year's budget is 1 billion rand for, for exit mechanism, and next year, 800 million rand. Now, this year, it seems like it's only 868 million that will be taken up. Why is this? What? Have, has the, the department picked up? Why do people not taking up the opportunity for MEM? Um, and then secondly, do we already know how much people will take the, the MEM opportunity in the next financial year? Because I think there's already people that has indicated they want to take MEM, but they want to exit only uh, in, in the next financial year. 
um, because that will also help us in terms of planning. And then, um, let me just see. Yeah, 10%, that's basically what I've got at this stage. Um, yeah, thank, thank you very much. If there's anything else, I can always come in again. Thank you very much. No, no thank you very much, um, uh, Mr. Mutley. Yeah, thanks, Chair. Uh, one question from from me, and I think uh, Honorable Mare also uh, touched on it, is with regard to challenges as uh, articulated in on the, uh, I think it's slide five, which uh, emanates from uh, uh, increased HRA capacity requirement to support the military operation, which as a result of that, there will be uh, a, an irregular uh, expenditure as a result of this uh, uh, requirements. I just want to find out what is it that uh, they have done to ensure that uh, uh, because these are requirements and my understanding is that they can say no, they need to ensure that uh, they implement these requirements as part of their mandate. But to what an extent are they engaging national treasury to ensure that there is condonment uh, in this regard? So that by the time the AG comes, it will not be an issue uh, because it's reasonable that they are executing a particular responsibility, but it can continue to be judged as irregular even whilst they are under pressure to perform certain responsibilities as uh, 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 they are provisioned within the, the Constitution and the Defense Act. Uh, what is it that they are doing? I will be gladly waiting to hear what is it that uh, the department is doing to avoid this irregularity? <clears throat> uh, thanks, Tabo. Uh, can I add uh, one uh, question? Uh, to the list of questions that um, <clears throat> are on the table already. Um, you, 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 re you report that um, <clears throat> the, you had planned to, to utilize um, um, the reserve force uh, to the tune of 1.9 uh, uh, 90, 259 uh, men days. That was the plan, but you've exceeded that number. Um, uh, you ended up, uh, uh, oh, you exceeded that number by 218, uh, 238 uh, men days due to uh, the unrest uh, in July uh, twenty. Well, due to largely due to, to the unrest, <clears throat> so that's 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 the number uh, by which we have exceeded your your planned uh, target. My, my my question: Why is that an issue when there is an a separate allocation uh, uh, for it? Is money? that is made available uh, to the department over and above what was already um, uh, budgeted for. Assuming that the budget that you had at the beginning of the financial year was to, was <clears throat> to cover the planned um, uh, uh, main days. Uh, but due to the challenges we experienced, we had to exceed that number by that much, uh, 218, as we are 218,000, as you are mentioning it. Uh, but there was funding for it. Just explain to us so that we understand why you still consider that as, as a problem. I'm raising this point because even in the future, 
even when you plan to have lesser numbers, I think uh, for the future, I don't know what numbers you you you, you set aside uh, for next year, for example, and you exceed that number by X number of uh, main days, there would be an allocation uh, given to the department over and above the allocation uh, within which you do your, your, your planning. <clears throat> Where is the gap? Maybe we should zoom in into the gap. The gap is, is underfunding uh, of the, <clears throat> this additional, uh, what you call a, a responsibility. If it is underfunding, it's underfunding by how much? So that we have not gotten a response that says this is what was budgeted for. This is an extra uh, funding and this is uh, the 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 balance at the end of the of the day is it negative or positive? Because if it is positive, it's a plus to the department because that money can then subsidize other things. If it is negative, obviously it's money that has got to be subsidized from other programs, you know, uh, or funded from other programs. Uh, uh, so that as we attend to the next uh, letter of deployment, of employment of soldiers, we also look at whether it comes with adequate funding for that particular mission. Before we come here and be told that, man, look, um, this has actually interfered with our planned um, uh, numbers as well as the budget that was made available for the papers. And uh, I now hand over to, to you, uh, Sector. Thank you so much. I don't hear them. Are they speaking? No, certainly not on my side. Sir. You keep on losing you from this side, so it's difficult to uh, follow. But colleagues, were you were, were you also losing me? I just want to check if the no, problem no, is on this side. No, no, sir, definitely not. I was following you the whole time. Oh, I see. I think the problem is on your side, uh, Sir Def, but you may come in. But the issue is reconciliation uh, after a deployment. This, you were planned to utilize so many main days, but due to the unforeseen uh, employment of uh, soldiers, you ended up with this uh, number, okay? In other words, you exceeded the planned uh, deployment by this, the, your, your, the, planned num the planned numbers or strength by this number. The allocation was this much, and this is the deficit or surplus. Thank you so much, over to you. <laughs> Okay, thank you, Chair. Um, I'm going to respond to the question well, we're required to indicate as to why are people not interested in taking them. Um, as we all know, that this is a, a surveillance package that is a prior initiated. And then I want to believe that the uncertainties in terms of the current economic situation. It, 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 you know, it's one of the most contributing factors because empl employees are not even sure that the package, that, that the severance package that they're going to get from the department will make them survive throughout their lives after they, they've existed. Um, what, what we have then done is we have embarked on, on conducting information briefs together with uh, uh, GDPF where the employees are provided with a full package information that will then assist them in making those decisions. Um, I, I will, I will and, and, and I want to assure the portfolio committee on defense that there is movement in that regard because we are now having another second round where we're going to consider quite a number of, 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 of uh, applications or identification that have been accepted by our members. I will then ask um, General Richard to respond to, to other questions. Thank you. Thank you, General. Thank you, Executive. Honorable um, uh, Chairperson of the Portfolio Committee on Defense, 
Um, in, in summary, those who have reached uh, or made comments and asked questions, there are four questions that, that I think the, uh, we have deduced from the discussion. And the first will be, what, would, what, what is the string that would meet the allocation? Uh, within compensation of employees. And I would refer um, the honorable members to, to, the, to the slide relating to the forecast uh, MTSF in year MTF uh, projections for, for uh, our plan strength. It is slide number eight of the information pack. It is a very, it is a very uh, well, let me say it's not an impossible uh, question to answer, but it's but a full strength that needs to be understood within the context of the, the, the evolving threat uh, uh, to the to the sovereignty of, of South Africa. And in saying that, to answer the question directly, it cannot even be answered because when you look at zero number one. Of, of the allocation forecast for the financial year 22, 23, up to financial year 25, 26, the allocation oscillates or varies between the financial years. And, and therefore the, the force strength of each financial year would be different. So this, so if, if the answer to the question only can, only can be if the allocation is is uh, stagnant or re remain constant? That's the first point. And if it is constant, given what we are allocated for this financial year, the number that uh, this financial year uh, can fund is 68,000 employees and soldiers, not 73,000. And the variance between the current strength and the strength that it funds accounts for the deficit that we have in the compensation of employee allocation. Um, the strength is defined by the security, evolving security uh, scenario of South Africa that requires the South African National Defense Force to conduct successful military operation. Given that, it also needs to take account of unplanned and unforeseen taskings that was not part of uh, initial planning, nor was it part of the allocation uh, as appropriated uh, uh, by government. And, and Mr. Baba is quite good in, in, in his deliberation on what is the gap where, where these, where, where, where these um, situations place itself up. The gap, is, the answer to that, sir, and, and portfolio committee members, is that we have not been reimbursed by National Treasury for the unplanned and unforeseen expenditure that we are incurring. And inclusive of that is the forecast utilization of reserve forces beyond the planned number of reserve forces. You are quite right to say, to make the, the deduction that the reserve force mandates have been planned and it, it was funded. And, and even on, on, on the serial number three, you can see the, the planning and the funding of this, of this financial year as going forward. So the gap is, and, and you might ask, what would be the financial gap determined by the department? It is, uh, it is not as easy to forecast as Honorable Maria has indicated. You take the 218,000 mandates more than what is planned, multiply it by four. The reserve force utilization would be reduced if the operation is in, as is, is the case with the projected uh, uh, termination of Operation Cherry. But it will continue for operations, uh, other, uh, other operations planned or unplanned, or even exercises that we conduct in terms of preparing our forces. Um, and in this respect, the department has made a determination for. <coughs> The cost implication projected for the financial year for the number of mandates exceeding the planned mandates and the funded <laughs> mandates for reserve forces. And that is 480 million rand for the forecast for the financial year. So the, the department is on top of 
the gap between what is allocated and funded and what is it expected to, 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 to execute in terms of uh, uh, its planning uh, going forward. The, the third question uh, that I would like to uh, maybe respond to is to indicate that um, in terms of the unplanned, unfunded uh, operations currently not, uh, not funded, but uh, the expenditure is going off, is um, accounts to almost 500 million rand. And, and this 500 million rand, must, you must put it on top of the forecast expenditure uh, of the deficit that, uh, that we are indicating as a concern. And, and, uh, and uh, we must appreciate with, the, with due respect to the Minister of Defence, the Portfolio Committee's intent to resolve the impasse of the compensation of employees' deficit. Um, and, and that should be taken forward and the support that we want to at this And then to, to indicate uh, or to reflect on uh, what, are, what is the plan for, for next year in terms of the main funding? As indicated during the presentation, Honorable Chairperson, the department has submitted to National Treasury an exit strategy for mobility exit mechanism in terms of the 1 billion, as well as the conditional grant of 800 million for next financial year. And the number four cost for next financial year is 650 uh, soldiers to be identified uh, in, in, in that order. But as, as the honorable members are aware, it is a conditional grant on our performance of this financial year. And, and we will execute it accordingly once we receive the allocation uh, in terms of, of, of next year's implementation round of the mobility exit mechanism. Um, uh, the, last, the, the last one is relating to the condonment. Um, in the reparations for National Treasury of the staff level, it is expected that on the back of the performance of implementing the HR interventions, as you have now received the status report, at the conclusion of, of the third quarter, uh, a, the department is contemplating to submit an uh, application for condonement for the irregular expenditure dated from 2017-18 to this one forecast financial year 22-23, and it's estimated around 12.9 billion rand uh, of application. And, and we are looking forward to, to, to that because in the last staff engagement of five, uh, 4 October 2021, um, the department was given that assurance that the current uh, application was in abeyance and subject to our performance against planned implementation of intervention, the National Treasury would favorably consider such an uh, application during this financial year for the past period. And I'm hoping that they would not turn uh, around on that one. Thank you, sir. No, th thank you very much. Uh, uh, just before I... I let you off on this one, um, General. I have two follow-up questions uh, to make. One, it's, um, it, it, it's on the reconciliation. Um, uh, uh, <clears throat> uh, after the, the fund, the what you call the unfunded or underfunded uh, tasking. Um, is it possible to share that information with the portfolio committee to say uh, for the for the deployment uh, the employment of um, uh, soldiers uh, on this date uh, so much was allocated in terms of that uh, employment letter but this is the actual expenditure in relation to that deployment and for um, uh, employment of uh, soldiers, why? This was the allocation in the employment letter, and this was the actual uh, expenditure. So that we keep track on the extent to which um, the department um, uh, <clears throat> is uh, uh, underfunded. Um, 
in all these uh, activities that are uh, uh, extra to uh, what is already uh, in the budget. Um, is it possible to get that information? You may not go far. Uh, you may take two years, the 20, uh, the last financial year, uh, that's 2021, and uh, and 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 um, uh, on and 21, 20, uh, 2021 and 21, 22. This last two financial years, just to give us a sense, a breakdown of um, uh, 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 the extent to which um, you had to account for the deficit as a result of this uh, uh, employment um, uh, that were not uh, planned, uh, as it were. That's one. And two, <clears throat> um, you, you report here that um, you are still in the process of identifying more people uh, for uh, um, this exit mechanism um, a project. And uh, I thought uh, people will come forward and uh, you make the information uh, available to all and sundry and say, this is the thing. Uh, of course, in addition to that, you will encourage some people to actually uh, avail themselves. In other words, you'll identify those that you encourage to avail themselves uh, for, for the opportunity. Uh, how do you go about it? Are you still closing it? Um, only making it available to those identified by yourselves? Or you also uh, uh, make it available to uh, people who come forward and say, look, uh, the care prospects within the defense force uh, are now limited. And um, what is there for me if I were to exit the system so that the people can then make a, an informed a decision whether to exit or remain within, with, with, within the system. So, so, so how do you go about it? And then uh, uh, last, was it last week we discussed the succession planning and the career management uh, policy uh, within, within the department and, and that, if that was linked to the exit or a mechanism, uh, that would uh, assist you, uh, you know, in making a, an informed decision so that you don't let go someone that you desperately need because uh, you'll have to replace that person uh, immediately as, as he or she walks uh, out of the door. But replacing that person with someone with not the same experience will actually compromise the, the capability, the operational efficiency uh, of the department. So, so you, you make a call uh, as it were. Uh, I just want to understand um, how the two, uh, one informs the other. The succession planning career management a policy informs you your decision in letting go uh, the members either whether they came voluntarily to say we avail ourselves or you you are actually identifying them maybe just those two uh, mr Murray, you want to make a follow-up it looks as though we're not going to deal with yeah. the budget uh, sorry yeah. with the presentation on the fourth quarter uh, I'm, I'm looking at the time yeah. mr Murray. just just to follow up maybe on, on what you're saying chair um it is it is quite important that we that we need to know um, in terms of the last question of yours whether they do a proper planning and I don't want to use this in a derogatory or a negative way but to make sure that we are exiting people that we can afford to exit or that we want to exit uh, and we do not have a situation where we are losing expertise which will just you know, be to the negative of the defense force because then you sit with, with scarce capacity, you haven't got the knowledge, you haven't got the expertise because they have used the, the opportunity of MEM. So, so, I mean, the ideal situation is to retain the most um, critical expertise and to basically um, lose people that we want to lose or that we, you know, can afford to lose. Um, so how do we manage that? Um, and I think then just in terms of your first question, 
it is just very important that we must know that all the consequences have been have been considered. Um, because if we do it in a kind of a piecemeal way, then we will just find ourselves uh, later on in a problem. Because we, we must remember that when the president do the authorization, he authorized uh, an, uh, um, an amount to be expend, uh, what the expenditure will be. That doesn't mean it has been budgeted for. It also doesn't mean that it will be funded additional. And we know that in Vikela's case, it, none of that have been, has been budgeted for or, or been provided for. So, so th that, that is a matter that you must address to, uh, with us, please. And then whether there are communication, and I've asked that in the past, and there was never a clear answer, whether it is communicated to the minister, to the president, to the minister of, 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 of treasury, uh, the minister of finance, whether they are aware that we can actually not afford doing these exercises or these projects or these operations without additional funding. Um, and, and, and we know that there's been this, this proudness in the Defence Force to say, we will do whatever we are instructed to do, irrespective of the funding. Fantastic attitude. It doesn't help our problem because we will just see a, 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 a less defendable or, or a defense capable, capable defense force later on in the year or years to follow. How do we address that? And, 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 and is it communicated with National Treasury and the ministers in this regard? Thank you, and the president. Uh, thank you very much. Um, it's more full. Uh, over to you, uh, Sagdev. Thank you, Chair. On, on the issue of the men, maybe um, a, brief, a brief background to what happened previously will assist the committee to, to understand how the department is, is now conducting this. Um, previously, this tool, we had this tool, and unfortunately, when we made an assessment, of, of the people who were exited at the time. It came to the attention of, of the department that we actually exited the people who were the skills that we most required. And, and it was for that reason that then the, the minister at the time then suspended the, the men uh, and, and requested us to, to make an, an assessment on, on how we would go forward with it without, you know, in order to ex exit people without compromising our operational effectiveness. That is why then we, we came up with the provisions that we have with now to say, it is an employer initiated process. And, and by doing that, it then we will be sure that we retain all the skills that we require for us to continue being operationally effective. Um, what, what we, we do, uh, Chair, is we, we look at career management, the question that we asked, and uh, most of the people that we have identified to exit now are the people that in terms of our career management and you know the, the, the number of ranks, the number of years that they have spent in their ranks, we have come to a conclusion that there is no prospect for them to progress further. So, and, 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 and we have also come to a conclusion that while they were still on the system, they then transfer the skills to people who would then take over from them where it is necessary. So there is succession planning that is taken into consideration and also we were also looking at, fiercely looking at the skills, the staff skills that we need that will then make us to continue being operationally effective. Um, and then <clears throat> we initially, we, we, we then uh, indicated that we will consider people from the age of 53 to 57 exiting. We have now you know, shifted the, the exiting age to 58. So, which we, we because in, in, in doing our assessment, it also came to our attention that those people who are, there are people who are at 58 who are willing to, to exit. However, what we need to make sure is 
there is a skills transfer before they, they leave the department. Thank you. I need, I need a sec dev. Sorry, I need a sec dev to come in on, on, on this one. Uh, because now I, I want us to, uh, you know, be assured that uh, if there is a, a delay uh, in the implementation of this uh, uh, project, we know where to point the finger at. Let me tell you why I'm raising this point, sec dev and the minister. I mean, if, if the, the process is employee um, <clears throat> initiated, like uh, the general is presenting today. So it suggests to me that <clears throat> it will go at the pace of the employee, not at the pace of people who want to exit. And then the employer, um, you know, having a final word, whether to release um, uh, adv advocate uh, Kuju or not? You see, so 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 I I I want I want uh, I, I, those two processes. I mean, uh, those two approaches are not mutually exclusive. Uh, saying, please uh, raise raise your hand if you want to leave, but and still leave the actual decision you know, with the, with the employer, whether to release me on, 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 or not. But if it is the employer, I foresee the employer um, uh, moving at a pace uh, that may be informed by other reasons. Maybe they think that Cyril Klaba it's, let's start with, the, with those that are problematic. Problematic is Tabu Mutle, uh, Cyril Klaba, let's get rid of them first. You know, and another, in other words, using not me, the, not me, well, only you. Yeah, but, but the, yes, maybe maybe next time when we want to consider those whose discipline is not um, uh, okay for for the military, will come to the to you. <laughs> yeah, but 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 I'm saying you 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 may actually end up with a situation where the employer is using the the tool for all the wrong reasons. Maybe to target those that they want to offload uh, from the system. Now, when you do that, it immediately gives the tool a, a, a package. Yeah, what a package? Is that a package? Yeah, is the right, is the right correct term? It, to say, oh, if, if, if they say uh, it's, 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 it's a, a Brian uh, Manchi. So, Brian would say, ah, why me? Oh, is it because they want to offload me from the system? Uh, what have I done to be targeted for this purpose? But if you opened it up and then in the end, you evaluate each case and then decide this one will let go, this one we're not going to let go for the following reason. I think in that way, it, 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 it makes the process uh, freer, uh, free of any uh, baggage that people may actually attach to it. Maybe Secretary, if you may want to comment on this. I, I foresee us in the end blaming you and saying, well, look, that you spent half of what was allocated to you, it was precisely because you were moving at a snail pace and, uh, and and not at the pace that is actually required to enable you to spend the money in order to get more money in the new financial year uh, of a two sector. Thank you very much, uh, Chair. I think that the process that you, you spoke about, the way you give the example, um, I am told that in the department, we used to uh, exit the people that way, but also the, it came to a point where Remember that when you deal with this exit, uh, we can also have a right as an employer to say, but you possess the skills that the institution still needs. And we want also people to understand you before you leave. So we, we make sure that then you don't um, draw all uh, the skills that are needed by the institution out. So it's a process that is properly th uh, 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 thought of 
and then we look at all those where we need to retain the people and also we evaluate the ones who say that no we want to go so we are able to deal with those ones one of the challenges that we have chairperson is that if you look at lower levels in the organization we have tens of thousands of privates that are also probably in their 50s and they were operas and probably i'm not so sure what in terms of the succession planning and their promotion going up the ladder we may just think of also refining the system so that we look at that because part of it is that as people move you also want to rejuvenate and bring younger people in that will grow within the system so we have to look at that so it is not always equal to that if you have to exit it can only be the people that are up because when you look at the down at the levels at the bottom the congested but there are also those where the prospects for moving up are not that much some of them if you have some somebody who has been a private for 27 years so what are the chances and the person is in their 50s so these are all the things that uh, we need to consider from a process point of view a uh, uh, chair um, we the, the one billion that we have been given it's an amount that we need uh, to deal with uh, by a, a, a end of March, that is the 31st of March, because come the 1st of April, we start the new financial year, and that's where they'll give us the 800 million. And to that extent, we have also now looked internally to say where do we get the 868 million that will be the liability of the department to deal with the benefits of those that are exiting. And I think that in the presentation, they have, we have been able to give you the numbers. Now, from that million, it, it affords us the exit of 600 of our members. So I think that we are on course and we will be able to deliver on that. Hence, for us to then go back and look at our a, 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 a reprioritization to say hey, where do we get the money to then uh, put in for the liability of the department. So as far as that goes, in actual fact, our colleagues from HR, they said we will complete the process at the end of January. And then I said, but the money is given to us to finalize the process by 31st of March. So let's allow ourselves the time until the 31st of March so that we are able to deal with that. So that is as far as the issues of MEMCO. Now, in terms of the reconciliation after the deployment, I think we can go back as far back as three years, Chairperson, to give you uh, the statistics for Operation Mistral, Vigela, and Chariot. And then we should be able then to be able uh, to, to make that information available to you. Chairperson, the issue of dealing with COE, if we were able to have a solution, probably we would have implemented the solution. Because the, the, the situation in which the department found itself is that, yes, there was an HR plan. And that HR plan was necessitated because the COE was the only area where the department was overspending. And just as we sold it to everybody and they got into it, then they started cutting further on the COE. Now, the point, Chairperson, where we, we are asking, how can we have irregular expenditure on this? I don't think it's a straightforward answer that we can give, simply because uh, uh, the Department of Defense is a task-driven department. Some of the things we never planned that we will have Operation Prosper where we had to deploy our soldiers in eight provinces. And as we speak, we have them on standby because then remember that we were going to what's a July not so long ago and August anticipating of the Marikana anniversary and all those things. So they are still on the ground. As long as you have the feet on the ground, Chairperson, then it means that you have to pay the allowances. Now, when uh, uh, before the HR plan, we had 2.6 million mandates that were planned for, and we were asked to cut. It went to 1.9. 
at as of the 31st of March of the financial year that we just came from, we were at 3.2 million days. And that talks to the fact that to ask that we cut is not the right thing. And probably this is where it takes us because we have even exceeded the 2.6 million days that we were, 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 were planned for. Where our problem comes from, Chairperson, is that when Treasury cuts the budget, they actually not only cut COE, they also cut where you have the, the boots on the ground, which makes it a little bit difficult when your HR budget is already cut. So it, it becomes difficult for us to say, how do we regularize that? We even went when we're still at 7.4 billion and say, can we condone uh, that? They said, no, we will condone depending on the success you make in implementing your HR plan. We were not long even in the implementation. The past M uh, MTF, they cut 15 billion over three financial years. We are in the second year where they've cut now a uh, 12 billion, 4 billion last year now, and then next year it's another 4 billion. So as and when the task come in, and I think it is even a conversation um, where we are saying that, yes, we have to support uh, the, the, the police if the need arises, but then really it cannot be because there is always the constant outcry to say deploy the soldiers. But just to get the vehicles and the warm bodies out there, we already run a huge bill. So it is not that uh, much easy. And if then our plant mandate was 1.9 and we stood at 3.2 million, then it tells you that your allowances will go up. Remember also those people, the more mandates you have, it means it is the rations that increase. So it's a whole host of things that go with it. So, so I think that it is, really difficult uh, on the part of the department to say, what is it that we can do? On the basis of having analyzed how things are going, that's why we then give you that projection to say, if we are allowed to implement that, then we feel that by year 24, 25, we, can, we could have reduced that significantly, and then 25, 26. But none of us sitting here now knows what will happen in 24, 25, and 25-26 in terms of the deployments that will be needed there. So it makes it a terribly difficult person uh, to deal with that. So I think um, it, it's, it's some of those things that we need to look at and we are consistently engaging. And one of the things that we are dealing with right now, we got the information from Treasury where they are saying that Operation Beginner in here, we are not going to be able to fund you. And that is in here, it means that the next six months, uh, uh, starting from the second half of this financial year, they say they are not going to fund that. And already the soldiers are on the ground. So these are the challenges that we face. And sometimes it is not about balancing and ticking the boxes, but it's a whole host of things that go into that. And it is not even all of those host of things that go into it that the department is in, is, in, is, is, is in control over. So those are the points that I'll make a, a submit chair and to say that we'll get the information to yourself over this, uh, on these three uh, operations uh, over a period of three years, how much of the expenditure has been on them. Thank you, Chair. No, th thank you very much, Secretary Fuld. I appreciate uh, that uh, um, reconciliation because we we will then be um, in a in a position to um, uh, uh, you know join you in your fight against the uh, treasury, um, you know because it means in the end uh, the over expenditure that gets reported against your department. Uh, yes, part of it is an over expenditure that is, um, it's, 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 it's <clears throat> was within uh, your planned uh, activities. Uh, but part of it is over expenditure occasioned by the un, uh, uh, unfunded, uh, the unfunded uh, mandate. Uh, I think that will give us that picture, the extent to which you are underfunded. And that is the amount that 
really it's, it's unfair to attribute it uh, to as an over expenditure uh, against against the department and then so please we need that information and secondly <clears throat> you you confirm to us today that um, the one billion rand uh, affords you to release only about uh, 600 plus um, uh, employees it can go beyond that and um, we note that um, because it's for the first time we're getting this information maybe it's because it arises from um, uh, the processing uh, of the of the of the information uh, within within the department. It's good detail we we, we are getting, and uh, so it means that if we get eight hundred million rand next year, uh, that eight million rand will only uh, you know uh, afford you to uh, exit uh, less than six hundred that you are releasing this year. In the end. Um, you see, you would have released uh, one point uh, something. In, in other words, the two allocation would have afford, afforded you to release close to one point uh, something members. I think 1.5 or something. I can't remember what I saw there. So no, no, we want to leave it at that for now, uh, but we'll monitor uh, the exit uh, mechanism, this project. We would also monitor the expenditure uh, against it. Um, but please, um, uh, it must be a two-way stream where members uh, make themselves available. Uh, and then of course, with you as the employer, having the last say on the matter, as opposed to you uh, particularly uh, driving it alone. I don't think um, it, it will give you the, the, the results that you are looking for, but would want to leave it at that you know Oh, you you know the the process is better than we do. Um, now the last person to comment on this and and close the, the discussion will be the minister of, of of defense. I don't think we'll move to the next uh, item on on the on the fourth quarter. We'll uh, uh, defer it to the next uh, meeting. Minister, the last person to comment on on this. Over to you, sir. Ma'am. Thanks. Chair, thank you very much. Um... On the last point you make, I must uh, say that the first big group was um, the employees volunteering to leave. That when that came before me with a recommendation that said, this one can go because of this, this one can go. So that, that initiative was initially grabbed by the employees themselves. I um, even yesterday I was processing the MEM. What worries me is that, in fact, the approach should be targeting where there is a bulge and also going towards where there is um, the size that is in into the pocket. In other words, you're not going to target the lower ranks, even though there is a huger bulge there than at the top but you are actually going to try and slim down the structure to the size that looks um, uh, to what you are hoping for. I then wanted to come in quickly on Operation Vigela. I do know that uh, we have a strange situation Chairperson, in South Africa. The DGs, the officials meet, they discuss, they take decisions on behalf of the executive. This, which uh, SACDEF is talking about, is a, a mouthing, because I have no better word with all the respect to put it in. It's a mouthing by, um, by the administration in Treasury to say that Vigela will not be supported coming in. This matter has been taken up, and I do want to defend my uh, my, my colleague in treasury because he has not taken that decision, neither has the head of state taken that decision. That will not happen. Um, we have put up a fight on that and I don't think it will happen. What must happen though is that I have actually promised treasury to come in with a plan from defense. 
that will say, this is where we want to go. This is how much it will cost us. I am yet, I asked for the meeting. I am yet to confirm the meeting because I cannot get that costed plan. That will enable me to go and say, I present the defense in the current economically depressed situation, but this is where we want to go into the future. As to the colleagues, other departments um, and the employments, we have had a discussion as colleagues where we have said where it is a disaster. Obviously, no, none of us is going to start talking about costs. Defense must run in, it must come to the rescue. We will talk costs later. But where it can be, for instance, the police, when they took some of our facilities, they went there with conditions. One, you will, we will not spend money fixing it for you. You will fix it for yourself. You will make it habitable. You will leave it in pristine shape. You will pay for your service. That already helps us to some extent. But what we need to do is actually enter into mini contracts with departments as we are deployed so that we can recoup. Now, if defense wants the money back, but does not enter into these simple steps, we're not going to get there. Then on the issue of the cost of employment, Chair, we're not going to be addressing this matter unless and until we admit as defense. And the problem is if you are living in an environment and you think it is normal and it is correct, you hate it when people say there is a problem with the policies. If the policies are right, you who is supposed to be executing these policies and policing them, you are wrong and therefore, there is a problem where any private, any corporal stays for 27 years and 41 years at standstill. Then it is not the corporal or this person's problem. It is the institution's problem that is failing in its policies. And therefore, we, we need to be looking at a whole basket of things to correct things in defense. But it is sometimes because an outsider comes in, looks at things, says, but explain this. And there is no explanation that is given. So you continue with the way you are used to because you are comfortable. You continue and you don't want to be told because this is the way we have been running things. But in fact, I have said it quite openly and publicly, that it is the department is cruel to any corporal who has spent 40 years in that situation. Because when you know that this person is not going to make it into the next two services, you do the right thing. You allow this person when they are still agile and young enough to go out with whatever so that they can look at another career option. You may even help them find the next career option. So defense has been self-inflicting. And, and, and when it is self-inflicting, everybody takes advantage of that. So I would say that I want to take uh, 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 the responsibility of sitting down, breaking down the defense budget <laughs> and then just trying to understand how we even put it together. I can tell you now, now quite openly in public that a department that brings in a full uh, budget and you can't even comment on it, you must sign off, is problematic. And when we look at slimming the Department of Defense, we must be looking at both sides. Right now, Chair, I think we are focusing mostly on the uniformed side. We must actually, as a department, agree with Parliament on the ratios between the civilian side and the military side, and therefore slim them accordingly. Making sure that we never lose the essential services that we need, making sure that those who are there and those who are incoming are actually sharpened, availed all the opportunities so that your defense is always upwards moving. It is not just about the money. It is also about uh, being critical about your own performance and not just thinking that money solves all the problems. 
So there are, there are areas where, for instance, I would be very happy, and I don't want to disrespect the HR and the deputy, but I would be very happy with getting somebody who has specialized in HR and is a civilian death insertion at HR. Because I suspect that that critical insertion might help us look differently at how things are happening there. We're looking at, um, at um, the issues of how we use the reserve forces and whatever, whatever. As a matter of fact, um, we need to go back there and criticize ourselves. Is it how we should be using it? Um, you know me, I've been quite open about the issues of collapse. And I think that we should stop doing what we are doing so that you give the reserves with their quiet uh, uh, whilst they were in force or even as they are reserves and bettering themselves that more chances to come in rather than the collapse. So Chair, I can only push it there. Um, we've heard what you are saying, but on Vigela, I have promised the treasury the, the figures that they need to make sure that that which has been preached does not come to pass because it will surely, and yes, if the, we save the money that we're spending on Vigela, we can divert it to a number of things, Chair. The, I'm the first one to say that. But if you do that also, and South Africa gets into a worse a situation than Mozambique, we will only blame ourselves. Thank you, Chair. No, no, thank you very much, uh, Minister. Um, we'll end it on, on that note, uh, that we will keep an eye on um, the, the implementation of this uh, project. Um, we appreciate the, uh, uh, <clears throat> the responses from uh, the department. To all our questions, I think uh, they were dealt with um, frankly and, and honestly, but uh, obviously <clears throat> the, the pudding is in the eating. So it's when the reconciliation, reconciliation is, is done at the end of, of, of the financial year that will give us a picture of um, where uh, we, we stand in terms of um, uh, the, the numbers. Um, of members, um, the, 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 the strength, the, the plan strength, as well as um, <clears throat> the, the success of the, of the exit uh, mechanism. We want to leave it at that uh, for, for, for today, uh, but please, the information we requested, we appreciate that we get it as soon as possible. Um, maybe the last point, Minister, <clears throat> when are you tabling the, the, um, the annual report? Let, let me tell you why I'm asking this question. Um, you see, we want to take a presentation uh, from the AG on, 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 the, on the thing. It's on the 28th. It's not next week. It's, it's the following week. And the, the AG would not come and do the presentation uh, to the portfolio committee. Um, if the report would not have been tabled uh, by then. Um, so uh, I, I don't know if all departments or ministers have, starting, have started uh, doing the tabling. Uh, I've not seen it yet, uh, but maybe if we hear from, from you or, or the sector who are dealing with the, um, uh, who are scheduling, um, and making a, a proposal to you uh, may assist to get a sense. I, I don't want us to arrange that meeting on the 28th and, 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 and have to postpone it because you will not be ready with the tabling. Uh, Minister? Uh, before I come in, I see sector send this up, Chair. Yes. Can I yes. give it? Yes. Thank you. Let's, let's take your sector. Thank you very much, Madam Minister. Uh, Chair, the, the, the annual report was tabled yesterday. Oh, it's been tabled. Okay. Minister, no, no, Minister, thank you very much. So we'll then interact with, with it. So on that note, colleagues, I, 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 let me thank you, Minister, uh, Deputy Minister and, and, and Secretary for the team for uh, the discussion tonight. I think it was a, a useful, fruitful discussion. 
colleagues, we've gone way over time. Thank you very much for um, accepting, uh, for agreeing to stay on till this time. The meeting stands adjourned. Thank Long you. live the chair. Thank you so much, Minister. Bye. Recording stopped.